slander Go do a cheeky overheat now guys, just overheat on this guy, get him down, come back in, multi free go. Go do there a cheeky overheat. Bombs away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did I kill my way? <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna try to move someone quickly here. I'm gonna jump immediately, jump my contact, and align to GE tank. I've managed to basically fill my ore hold with one rock. Just had to move a bunch of it to the fleet hangar to make room for more. Fuck. Hey, Chido. I think oh, the reason that we had so much trouble for a long time there, guys, is because literally every Ferox I was killing was coming right back. It might be possible to dual box two bases. Total of single box. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're dead. Wow. Oh, this man just... is fucking amazing. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is a single bomber. So is this a U time zone? You just find a bunch of, you know, AMK Oracles and dip them all? <laughs> no comment. Okay, put an X when you're ready, guys. Take on, boys. Stop running, you bitch. Oh, there's a fucking avatar just land. Oh, they really tackle me. Oh, don't be a jungle. Oh, don't be a jungle. Yeah, the place is too far. Oh, the point is, come on, come on. Go, go, go. I'll do it with you. Kill the Vindicator, then the tank. Vindicator's dead. And the other tank. Yeah. Square mode, thank you. Run through. Give him. Oh, dude, like, I just. Yeah, die, die. I, I just, like, got out of there. Killed the dunk that shit. I was, like, hanging around with a bunch of the guys from Swaz, and I was, like, sharing up a dude for, like, two, three hours and shit. DD's green, DD's green, DD's green, DD's green. Subcaps, you're shooting at zero. Subcaps, you're shooting at zero. It was Dank Leagues, but, uh, you know. I fucking love you. I'm still trying to find out. Okay, we're gonna need a second triage. Alright, you're ready, you're ready, you're ready. Dreads, overheat, overheat, everything. That denies a fireball. I was just casually going through. It was just a coincidence that Beck was following with an arrows of the side. Tail, I'm getting told you're like streaming. Out of flight. Like, <laughs> <on this board. laughs> All scimitars, eat your harpers now. Are you leaking? Overheat, guys, overheat, 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 everybody overheat. Tackle, wake the fuck up and get a scram on Blitz. Is that yes or no? Come on, keep the bubbles up. Props off, props off, props off, props off, props off, props off. Listen, guys. Come on, boys. Come on, come on, come on. Do not burn out your guns. Do not burn out your guns. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes. Fuck what? Yes. yes! Loot that fucking wreck right now. What, what are you watching? Wake true. the fuck up, people. I know this fleet's been going on for a while. Cycle up a blitz back on the Astro. Cycle up a blitz back on the Astros. Wake up! Sign us up. Rick is up. Take bridge. Get moving on. Get, get convict. Brock has it. Yeah, go with that. Go with that one. <laughs> Sim, did you say that the avatar's back? Is that the target? Tackle an avatar again, that went great last time. <laughs> So we got our ass kicked. You guys like really four, fucking three, suck at like doing a stream, you know, like technical day, issues. Like, severely handed. should be real simple, but like you just should be simple, but they're not for you. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to whatever the fuck this show is. It's uh, you know. Serious Slander Saturday, I believe, is the time of the show that we are involved in now. And, uh, you know, the whole topic of the show is, like, chatting shit about people. And we had um, Thomas Wilk, and now Carmen has just joined us, of course, because Thomas Wilk's the only portrait there. And um, meanwhile, Kale is trying to figure out why his mic isn't working, so I guess we'll have to deal with that. Can I just like try to like ask a question here about like why do I not have a portrait here? Can I please get a portrait? You know, important. Yeah, you need to have a portrait. 
I might just decide to veto the show if I don't get a portrait. So I think you should fix this. Hey, there we go. <laughs> hey, there we go. Hello, and welcome to Serious Lander Saturday, the show that doesn't ever really fucking start unless somebody has a goddamn sound issue. I tried to play a video at the beginning of the stream, apparently it fucked up, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, and apparently you fuck up the shots you do. I am Kale Eagles Eye, FC of Test, with me is Thomas Wilk, FC of Test, as well as Carmen Gel, our military director, yes you will get a portrait, and Luke Twa, FC of Goonswarm. Welcome to Serious Lander Saturday, the topics tonight are mayhem going to initiative. Is this a good move, or is this the beginning of the fall? NSH falls. Can I derail this entire topic Intro? for the show to start <laughs> with, right? Fuck it, why not? Luke, you're here. You're a good one, FC, right? Like, the, the show that we normally have is mostly, like, you know, like, either test or, you know, like, X slash, you know, air quotes, legacy people on it. Why is there not more goons and, you know, Imperium people on the show? Like, do they not want to be involved? Are they not interested? Like, what's what's the deal, right? Why is there not more goons on the show? Uh, it kind of happens when your ATZ is comprised of, uh, let's say, kind of awkward um, Euros and Americans with awkward sleep schedules. Are you trying to tell me that there is like no no FCs in the entire Imperium that it's not you? Hmm? No, what I'm saying is that uh, there are Australians in our alliance. It's just that not many of them tend to be FCs. You should give them a load of shit and get them to come on the show. That's what I think. What, the people who aren't Australian? Uh, well, the, 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 people, the people who are Australian and have seized within Goonsform, which is, you know, I admit, probably you know, a minority, right? But you should you know, get them on. Get them on. I don't know. Most of them are pretty AFK at the moment. I think I might be like the one of the only AUTZ, like AU, AUTZ FCs. Are you coming on Sunday? Sorry? Are you coming to the fight on Sunday? Oh. That'd be telling. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I will let Kale continue with his uh his schedule for the show. Sorry for derailing you. <laughs> it's fine. Look, it's, no one expects anything different. It's an Australian show, and this is basically the the equivalent of us sitting at a pub talking shit about a video game that we absolutely love to hate. Uh so yeah, NSH falls. Uh, glorious undercutting or fucking dick move. And CCP changes to the upcoming changes and patch. Uh, is CCP still out of the loop, or are they finally starting to see the light? That's it. <laughs> Welcome to Serious Landed Saturday, where I can't work out the fucking get Carmen's photo on. Jesus Christ, we need to. Just- well, Thomas Thomas Volk, right? Thomas Volk is up. This is uh, his turn to like throw his opinion in the fucking ring about these things. I'm just here for the wild ride. Industry changes, Thomas Walk. What do you think about the industry changes, like the most recent patch that uh, you know, they put out to CC? So, as a person who hasn't mined in the last three years, I think I have a very strong opinion on industry changes, namely that we should like not do what CCP is doing. And, just, and like, why is that? I have like no idea about mining. That's that's a problem here. So, like, I barely even looked into it. I think our really consensus here would be remove mining, to be honest. Yeah, remove mining, and just make people fly battle procs. We can't the show might not be the best place to discuss those mining changes and industry changes in that case, I suppose. Well, the problem is you can't... That's not the right one. Uh, you... Uh, you... Are you... I, I, I try to do this, guys, sometimes. I swear I'm a... Fucking idiot. Um, it's just a very complicated issue, you know, like it like it has, you know, like indirect impacts that you know touch a lot of stuff, right? Oh, for sure. It's uh, difficult to understand like how those uh, changes are gonna impact like the game on TQ as a whole until like it hits TQ. Uh it probably will take like months after it goes live to like really see like the real impact of what those changes are gonna be. You can have a 
thought or two about how it's going to go. You can predict it, but no one really knows like what the real impact is going to be. No, I'm I'm happy with the fact that it appears that CCP is listening. Uh, but as I said on the week before last, uh, I am not a miner. I don't know much about it. I've just you know, I'm going. You're way too old to be a miner. <laughs> there you go, Carmen. You have a banner, unlike the uh, you know the flagship show of Serious Land and Center, which is Trash Talk Tuesday. You've got your character banner up. I'm just a yeah. comedy relief man. I mean, what I heard is that our four moons will give. T one B I I think if I read this one block correctly. Yes, that's correct. I also saw that they are removing a lot of the waste yield from Tech One miners and drones, which should definitely help with uh, you know people without the skills to be able to try to make some misc. I've not looked into this too much, like so you know forgive me for being very ignorant, but um, my understanding was that if you want to turn P one into P two, you have to do it you know via the you know, PI, you know, planetary interface, right? And my understanding was also it's very difficult to get your PI that's like a low level PI to transport that to like your you know factory planet or whatever you have to do your higher level PI. Pretty sure the idea was that the P one materials were required required in building. That was the bottleneck. Uh, was it P ones that uh, were required for like the components for like the battleships and stuff? Yeah, I think so. Well, that's not the worst idea ever. In that case, from CCP's side, like, I can kind of see that. I mean, you could just not include it in the recipe for the battleships. I'm not trying to say that there is not better ways to have done it. I just like, I'm trying <laughs> to say that I can understand the ideas behind why they have done that. It's one way to make it not terrible, basically. Okay. I've got a better idea. Like, because you get a T1 like, PI material sound from moons, and you have to like somehow convert it into T two. CCP should just introduce more citadels for oh, exactly fuck. that purpose. <laughs> the problem is citadels are, so are too creepy. many. What the fuck is wrong with you? Are too strong. Adding you more. should be able to put down something that's slightly smaller than a citadel. Um, some kind of player owned thing. Yeah, player owned um, structure. Let's call it that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's call it that. You could even then, limit, you can do you could it like limit the amount of them you could drop in a system. Shut like, maybe, like, by the amount of moons that are there or something. <laughs> Fucking Billy Jack to the fuck. I love that. Thanks for the subscription. Thank Cook. Really appreciate it. Oh, well, look, I, you know what? Let's just do away with Citadels and bring back player owned stations. That's what we should do. I, I I disagree. I mean, you you went around when player and stations were a thing. That's why you like. That's why you think they're good. They weren't Dude, good. I've been playing since longer than you, I believe. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I I lived in player own stations. <laughs> I was around when, when I... pauses were sovereignty, not fuzzy sov. I think I seriously started playing in about like twenty seventeen, maybe maybe a bit later than that. I think sort of are honestly fine. I think they should just like change some no, term mechanics. Absolutely fucking not. They need to Citadels expand. are Citadels are I, I, there's a soapbox here, right? And I'm I'm willingly not stepping on the soapbox. So I'm I'm stepping down. He, he's poking it with his foot. He wants to step upstream. What do you reckon? Would you like to hear Carmen get on the soapbox about Citadels? We'll uh we'll put a vote up for that. How about that? Oh, how do I even do this stuff? I really There's so many platforms to do it. Like I just, I, I don't need to do that. Like that's not like what the show is about, right? The show is about chat and shit, right? Like what's happened that we can chat shit about? There's like some fights in like fucking Cloud Ring or some shit recently, right? Didn't Imperium like giga feed like real recently over like I don't know? It wasn't even a real objective. They just like fed with like loads think, of dudes over like nothing. I think my I favorite know. PR of I, the week was. I, think I my woke up PR... someday. And then someone was like, hey, we do a bit of feeding. And I was like, it's like that sometimes. I think my favorite I don't know anything about that because like... I wasn't there. But do any of you know anything about that that we can discuss, like someone who's like informed on the topic to talk about it? No, look, like the favorite PR of the week was like Imperium with like 900 dudes facing off like 100 people from Tri and Volta. Oh, to, damn, I think, that was nuts. <laughs> yeah, to reinforce the Fortazar in Cloud Ring and then they just like feed. Yeah, but like you, you can like you can like point 
you can point at a BR and it's like, ha ha ha, it's like, you know, like two or three hundred dudes versus like seven hundred dudes and like the news is powerful, right? But like, you can't, if you actually like really look at it, like you can't, it's not something you can say like, oh my God, like Imperium's like, like really bad for like having like, you know, lost that battle report they were trying to make, right? If anything, it is a fantastic example of how just like the defensive game mechanics in the game are broken as fuck, right? Carriers on a four is just like broken. It's straight up fucking broken. If you can defend a four with like fucking two, 200, 250, like 300 dudes against like double your numbers and go like massively isk efficient, like it's just dumb. There's just no good counter to it. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking about this before, and I was um, when we were talking trash talk Tuesday. I'm like, they need to limit keep stars in the system, but the problem is if you put a hard cap on a keep stars, then you can't no, put one down. Yeah, like, this was just an idea I had, you know, like on how to make them less powerful. Um, maybe increase the range that they can be from a gate or something like that, or limit the. That shit is a band aid on a gunshot wound, dude. Like, why, why do you think that you need to limit the amount of uh, keep stars are about? Well, we know from the, the war that keep stars and the tether of keep stars and that, so sitting them on a gate, you know, in the jump bridge and shit like that, you know, when we're trying to break in that system, it was, it was cancerous. It was truly, truly cancerous. Yeah, for real. Like, that's, that's, that's fair. That's a, I wouldn't disagree with that, right? But, um, you know, like every system in a game, in NullSec, right? Like, there ain't, there ain't no system, like, Ain't no one got like every fucking system a keeps her on the gate, right? So um, you know, like do you think the citadels are okay outside of keep stars? Just just quickly, all right guys, the poll is currently up. Should Carmen get on the soapbox? Nah, yeah, yeah, nah. Shoot your polls up. It's for five minutes. After the five minutes, if you know, depending on the response, we'll uh, we'll see if we can get a uh, an angry if it's over fifty percent. Remember, this is Aussie lingo. Nah, yeah, is yes. Yeah, nah, is no. If it's if it's over fifty percent, yeah, no, it's pulling ahead. It. Uh, it ain't giving me nothing like you ain't had before, right? Like, uh, pretty like everyone's. What was that fucking Reddit thread? There's like what was it? Tao? Was it Tao or the other guy like Snuff? Who's it? Who's a fucking High Was it? He was a High Wante thread, right? Like that fucking structure, fucking feedback thread he put on Reddit. It wasn't. It wasn't Tower. It was High One Day, wasn't it? Look, I'm pretty sure Carmen's already on the pingers, mate. <laughs> nah, like if you go look at Reddit, right? There was like a thread that um, I'm pretty sure it was High One Two for up, like months ago, right? And it was like feedback on like why structures are like dumb and they like don't they they like actively incentivize fights to not happen based on like the mechanics behind how they work. Mm -hmm. And it was saying it was saying about like fucking like. Probably like, I don't know, 40, 50, like, fucking high level FCs from like basically everyone from like, you know, like high tech, low tech, null sec. You know, it's like massive groups and everyone, you know, like Imperium in it, you know, like your know, legacy, everyone, pretty much everyone from every walks of all of the groups in the game. But like, yeah, that's pretty much how it works. I wouldn't want to say that CCP is like not doing nothing about it, but um, I'm sure it's on their radar. but they haven't done nothing about it yet. So I am wait awaiting with bated breath, waiting to see what the change is gonna be that they're gonna do. Because if they don't do something, it's gonna be like bad. And I would like to see them do something. <laughs> yeah, mate. Aussie lingo. It's fucking it's absolutely crackers and simultaneously cactus. Is actually Carmen, uh, you you're uh, you've got a title on the cesspool chat, CSM seventeen. I can't talk about that. Can't talk about that? Or don't want to talk about it? It's OPSEC. Ah, a bit of both, a bit of both. Okay, well, maybe, maybe a future show then. Um, well, well, guys, let's uh, let's talk about Mayhem's going to initiative, leaving Brave. Um, what uh, Mayhem's about it, or well, I believe it's a 2,000 strong corporation, if I pull it up on Dotland. Um, well, like characters, like 2,000 characters? 2,000 characters, yeah. There are... Uh, from what I've How heard, many Zekiel actors they have? Because I heard it was like 30. 
Yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's from the, you know, I'm going off, um, you know, the uh, Trash Talk Thursday host Mav, um, and we all know Diva have an absolute hate boner for all things brave. But uh, apparently, Mayhem's a massive crab corp. It's uh, so um, they've made the decision. They're uh, they're gonna leave Brave. They're gonna go join Initiative and Fountain. Um, there were leaked logs off their corp chat talking about it, and the TLDR is. We don't fucking like goons, but initiative isn't goons, and as long as goons aren't telling us what to do, we're okay with joining initiative. Now, Luke, as someone from Goon Swarm, uh, is that an accurate thing? Does goons not tell uh, initiative what to do or where to go, or at least have some role in the leadership? Uh, pretty much the opposite, I'd say. So initiative tells goons where to go. Mitani is Brisk's yeah. puppet. Ah, you heard it here first. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's when the initiative been, says, man. when the initiative says we're going to go hit the EV jump bridge, we hit the EV jump bridge. <laughs> I mean, at the That's time, how it works. that system was initiative's like staging system. So. That's like historically been like goons' mo, though, right? Like when they're not out war they're historically like very very passive they kind of like don't really do too much and like out of all of we, we do one thing and it's crab out of all of the partners that sorry out of all of the partners that the imperium have had over the years right because obviously they had like a whole bunch of like you know other alliances involved in them over the years and most of them fold into uh you know, form at some point and and it's one of the only ones who's really retained their own identities like they don't Bastion, I would say, is probably the, the two that's like retained like an What is Bastion identity. doing nowadays? I don't really know. Uh Luke, maybe you can like spill some beans on that. Uh well really all I hear about Bastion are just like stupid rock or losses and that's about it, to be honest. <laughs> like losing losing a rock to a paladin or whatever. Like a few paladins came to the Rockle shot it and it died. It's like, how? And also, well, it's Bastion. Right, so like, no shit talk, right? Like, I'm actually being straight with you. I actually had quite high hopes for Bastion doing some, like, stuff after the war. Because, um, you know, when we were like, you know, when Tess was like moving down into, you know, pure basis Delve and moving out of our ancestral home that we'd been in for a bunch of years, right? Obviously, Bastion was causing us a bunch of fucking problems down that way, right? And um, they were doing a pretty fucking good job of it, right? Like, you, you can't really argue against the fact they were doing a pretty decent job of, like, making our fucking lives horrible in, you know, that that area of space. We are not really spending a lot of effort trying to hold, right? But it's kind of like our old space, and they just, like, being dicks about it, like, trying to, like, fuck our shit up, right? And um, I, I was hoping that they would do more stuff after that, and that would be like their springboard to like do a bigger thing after that. And it seems like they just like haven't really done a lot after that. And it's like I'm a little bit disappointed, right? Because I would have hoped that they would have been that should have been like their their way to get into doing a bigger thing, right? Not gonna lie, I thought like Bastion would have been like absorbed by Goonswarm sooner or later because. No, in the war they like kind of did their own own things backfield. I mean, you guys don't like us talking about the backfield stuff, but um, I think I mean, they just, like harassed Esoteria a bunch. That was I wouldn't thing. want to say that we don't like it. I mean, it was effective, right? Like there were certain groups that were more effective than others at doing it, but generally, like it was yeah, it was annoying. You know, like they were they were not. I would say the most effective of the, all of the groups that did hit the backfield, but like they were very consistent, right? And I've got a lot of respect for them for um. You know, like they, they they were like working it on a smaller scale, but their small scale was like really consistent, and they were like always out there doing some shit all the fucking time, right? And um, for the scale, it feels like for the scale of what their alliance was, they were like you know like really really going in, getting active, doing shit, right? And um, I think after the war kind of ended, like it feels like they've you know it felt like they could have done a lot of stuff, and then like when the war ended, they just kind of like haven't really gone anywhere with that like they've really done much after i mean isn't isn't that like something that can be applied to literally every single person in the game at the moment true yeah you're not wrong you're not i wrong. mean we we hit a, a lot of so, the changes so something i'm actually curious about is with a lot of the changes to the industry and everything that was thrown out during the war 
Now, granted, the war was getting a lot of players in and on and online and in fights and stuff. I'm actually curious if those changes had happened and there wasn't a massive war, like, you know, currently the biggest war in EVE history going on, would as many of people logged on? Would we actually see lower numbers or the numbers that we're seeing now logging on? Then, you know, at the height of the war. The war was the reason that people logged on. And when it stops, they logged off. Exactly. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to know if, because we saw, we saw a decline. The, like, there was obviously a decline. We saw a lot of, uh, even like on our side, and probably on your side as well, Luke, uh, when a lot of these changes came through, a lot of people who weren't really there for the PvP, but who were there for the industry backbone, just up and went, fuck this shit, I'm out. Um, do you think I mean, the, the player people, count would have actually been a lot lower during the war if it wasn't for it? Like, would we would CC? Yeah, not of course. Really like, were good, you know? the war propped up the player numbers, and um, when the war ended, it kind of fell out because it wasn't being propped up anymore. COVID was also yeah, the COVID and the war, the two biggest attri- um, contributors, I think, to the the numbers that we saw during the year thirteen months. Do you think, Luke, that the war would have been as enormous scale as it was if COVID had not happened? Uh, I mean, of course not. Like, literally everyone's inside and has nothing else to do, so just people picked up Eve again after, like, quitting for ages. Yeah. Do you think that uh, a war of that scale might happen again in the future? No, most likely not, but don't think that's something to be like too sad about, to be honest, because it got to the point of being large to where, um, like, as, as you saw, the servers struggled a bunch and stuff didn't happen because of that. Actually, you know, if I, I, I was expecting a big wars of that size. I was expecting a big hell war again with goons like trying to invade us, but. Nah, that's just, uh, there was like some like machinations, I suppose is the right word to use about that in like one of the fire sides, and then like it is like it's not really gonna happen, and it's pretty obvious it's not gonna happen now anytime soon at least. You know what? Uh, let's 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 do a bit of an experiment here. Um, you know, let's do a bit of an Eve thing. X up in Twitch chat if you started playing Eve again because of COVID. I know that Dan Cook said that he was a uh, COVID Eve player, so I wonder how many more decided to sign up and start playing because of uh, because of COVID. Something to do. Just me. Just you, apparently. Yep. Yep. There's this. Uh, yep. There's another one. A whole two people. Yep. Well, it's probably not the like most res- representative thing from Twitch chat, but yeah, like <laughs> common sense dictates that like that's what happened, pretty much. Oh, f- definitely. I know I can't keep my dicky sleep patterns now because everything's opening up and I've got stuff I actually need to do now that I can't do just through emails and texts and phone calls. Well, why why don't we ask the chat to drop an O, like an O in the chat, if they did not start playing the game again during the war? And they're just like following it for the memes. Well, I, I was playing pre-war. <laughs> A pre-COVID pre-war. And again, you know, I hate myself, so I play Eve. I think this is why a lot of us do it, isn't that right? <laughs> I think there's a good amount of people that play the game on, you know, all sides of things who are just, you know, kind of, they don't really take it too seriously, but they're, you know, when like the really big, like, conflicts and wars come up, they're kind of like, you know, they're there for that because they want to be the person that's kind of like there for like the big stuff happens. And that's respectable, you know, that's fair, but, um, you know, it's not like, you can't really like factor those people into a lot of stuff that you do, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm actually. I I wouldn't mind talking to um, CCP Larrikin. So CCP Larrikin, uh, for those who don't know, is a, uh, a he's an Aussie who works for CCP, and he specialises in like the math side, the statistics and everything. So the monthly economy report that's his baby. CC Paric, uh, CCP Larrikin is the one who, um, you know, co- correlates all the data and puts it into a form that us uh, smooth brains can understand. 
it'd be interesting to chat with him and um, see what his views on it. And it's actually something that I'm trying to set up at the moment. I'm trying to get a couple of the CCP guys on to talk about like you know their departments and stuff. And I'd love to get Larrikin on um, and yeah, talk about the, like his view behind it, the statistics side, the numbers um, about all this. You know, the the who who played beforehand, who played afterhand. Uh, if you guys were watching Eve Down Under when CCP Larrikin was doing his, um, the uh, blurb, I don't know what you want to call it, um, when they were like, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do. Um, he's told me he's going to message me when he puts it on YouTube. He actually correlated all of the data of all the fights throughout the entire history of the war, stuck it up on, on a map of ESO, uh, PB, Delve, and Quarius. And, um, like, showed how the fight went and how the losses and everything went and, um, you know, the the ISK value loss and everything. And it was it was a massive margin. Like, Goons had lost so much until M2, and then we were even. And then it was, like, flickering backwards and forwards. <laughs> you could tell the major fights. Like, uh... You know, that's, uh, that's one of, like, the... Even though, like, you know, obviously, like, you can sort of say that, you know, Pappy, like, won or lost the war, you know, based on whatever criteria you want to, like, throw out there for, like, you know, what, what was a winning, what was a losing kind of thing, right? Um, but, like, the thing that I was the most upset about during the entire war was the fact that there was, like, so much stuff that happened, which was, like, absolutely crazy stuff, right? Like, the fights in M2, like, the breakouts of M2, like, the, the fights in MC Dove, right? There was, like, loads of, like, crazy, crazy stuff that happened. And it's basically impossible, because I, I personally, right, I recorded, like, you know, video and audio, you know, for all of the big fleets and big stuff that I was involved in. I can't really ever show that to anyone, right? I can't really release all of that stuff. I can't stuff really ever show the fact that, you know, there's loads of OPSEC stuff in there, and yeah. You just can't really ever do that because, you know, like, people are not going to trust you in the same way that if you do that to reveal stuff that, you know, was like, you know, on that level kind of thing, I suppose. Well, I, I, and it's a real shame. It's a real shame because um, there's like so many people in the game that they just like never see like that like side of the game and like how it works. And it's not like that much of it. It's like that kind of like crazy, you know, but you can't tell people. It's not like that mental. And um, yeah, it's just a big fucking shame. It's a big shame that people don't see that so often. Yeah. That's my number one regret for the entire war is that we couldn't show people what fucking happened for the most part. P pull back the veil and show the cogs of the machine, but we can't show our specific setup of cogs because it's upstack. Yeah. Like there is, a, there is a lot of people, and I'm sure on both sides of the war, that we've got to shout out for the amazing work, dedication, and just late nights that they pulled. And no one knows who they are because, you know, they're not the face of, you know, the war. They weren't EFC. Well, why don't we take a second here to call out people from the opposing side that we think did a good job, right? Because we got a couple of people from Goons and Imperium here, and obviously we got a few people from, you know, our side test here, right? Like, why don't we take a minute here to, like, call out some names of people that, you know, we saw from the other side who did a fucking good job, right? Hello, are you bullying my large adult son, Luke Twa? Hey, Cryo. Speaking hey, Cryo. of someone who's got to get mad props for the work he did during the war. Oh, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by Cryo Huron, uh, AUTZ co-ord of Imperium and Goonswarm. <laughs> Do you actually think I can even get your picture up here? Former. Former? Oh, that's right. You, you're taking... Well, not co anymore, but uh, during the war was a co I believe. Yeah, I was co uh, after him too. So I started doing that stuff just after M2 happened. Well, let's like drill it down to like the most like being a cunt level, right? Everyone on the channel pick two people from the side and uh, call out some names. We'll start from the top. Crow is first person. From our side or from your side? Uh, from the other side. So everyone's got to pick like two names from the other side that you thought did a good job. Um, from what I saw coming on the other side, um, a lot of the major players, at least from my perspective, because I was still a line member up until M2. I had no um, interaction with leadership until that point. I um, wasn't a director until very close to the end of the war, even. Um, a lot of the older FC names, or the, the main FC names, kind of disappeared. And then you'd see, after M2, you'd see people like 
um, Sandra and Stone uh, step up and really start pushing fleets on the Pappy side. Um, at least from my perception on that side, he did, like him. Um, he saw a lot of. Um, so he was probably the big one, and then I definitely respect um, as much as I liked killing him. It was the the Col Marino hour daily from um what's his name Mr. yeah that was just like he's consistent and I, I highly respect the consistency of let's go do cormorants and gank a bunch of marauders because people are idiots with marauders and I very much respect that I remember I think it was him that killed um some in at smart bomber dude that would smart bomb with like Vin a Vindy and some macarials and three tag D every day <laughs> Yeah, Mist, uh, Mist is good uh, flying with him. I've seen a lot of his pings. I know a lot of people who fly with him say that he's absolutely amazing to fly with. Um, you know, like, if we're, if we're talking FCs, you know, like, I, I think the problem is, like, uh, like, all the FCs who stood up and weathered the war on both sides, like, obviously deserve props. But, you know, a lot of the people who aren't, as I said before, weren't the face deserve the props too. Like, the IT guys... Um, the fucking, you know, even the, the spies, um, the logistics people who you never see in a fleet, but we could not get our ships and stuff out there if it wasn't for them working tirelessly. The industry guys, so even with the industry changes, especially for you guys, because you had a really hard time. I know towards the end with the burning of the Golden Road and stuff, like Goonstorm had a hard time trying to get, you know, stuff into the 1DQ pocket. You know, so you had a lot of indie going on there at the time. So, you know, it's mad props to those guys who, you know, sat and stuck with it. Yeah, that, that's my five cents. <laughs> I could be wrong. Tell me tell me if I'm wrong. I think that's a, an interesting, like, take as well, right? Because there's so many people that did so many, like, super useful, like, incredibly valuable roles on both sides during the war. They're, like, they're never going to get called out because it, you know it's like opsec or, or, or it's like one the person that gets like the name call kind of shit right like the people who do logistics like the spies like it's like a hundred hundred and one things right like people who like do loads of like really important work but they're like not like the person with their fucking like brand name fucking slapped on front of the fleet yeah and they do they make like all this shit work right you can't do your job without those people but they never are the people that get like you know the recognition they really fucking deserve, right? On both sides of the aisle. So, this, no, no, what? This is a shout out to the. This is a shout out to you guys. Like, you know, obviously our line members are amazing for logging on. The FCs are awesome for, you know, creating content. But you know what? Let's shout out to the, the unseen force, the unseen foundation that holds up alliances and that keeps wars going. You know, like fucking 07 to every single one of you glorious bastards. I think the absolute psychopaths that somehow managed to work out how T2 production worked carried a lot of the war. Just pumping out 900 billion munins a week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Once you've got the spreadsheet, it's just, uh, you know, math ramp. Yeah, but I choose to instead... You're not wrong, yeah, it's, uh, it's worthwhile. It's a worthwhile call. Out. If, if it isn't a shiny uh, plastic click-clack math rock, I have no idea how to math. <laughs> I, I honestly, right, I think the line members on both sides of the aisle are possibly the MVP of the war, you know? I mean, no one could have done anything without, you know, the line members on both sides turning up to the fleets and, like, getting fucking involved and, you know, going ham for, you know, fucking fighting. Sitting in uh, T5Z and 1DQ just waiting for a ping to go out because something's happening, you know, sitting at their computers and waiting for it. Sure, but yeah. you also got to remember that was like that was like you know the end port part of the war, right? I mean, we took like what six to nine months to get to that point. Oh, yeah. You know, like we were we were fighting period basis, we were fighting a fountain, we were fighting Aquarius. You know, there's like a lot of stuff that happened that we were fighting over. You know, before we even got to that point where we were living in T five C, right? Don't forget, you also got to give a shout out to the G Magic and the E Tech V Jump Bridges for getting bashed so bloody much. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to Dark Shines. Like, you imagine John Bridges is uh, traumatized for life now. <laughs> uh, the EV jump bridge was actually all Bongalonga's idea. Um, and also the partners of the players. 
you know, dealing with, I know my partner was dealing with me shouting at fleets at two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, just, you know, next to my computer, essentially. But like, you know, shout out to all the partners and everything as well who dealt with it, with all the trouble and everything going on in the world at the time, and then their respective partners playing a video game and getting, you know, their anger out and shouting and cheering and stuff like that. You know, like, sh- sh- fucking shout out to every son of a bitch who fucking... Who's out there, you know? You're all awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, beyond the line members and like, you know, people doing lodging and all that stuff, you're like, you know, people's partners who put up with them, putting all hours in and stuff. You know, honestly, on both sides of the fence, like, you know, people doing like, you know, the coordination, you know, from like, you know, the Pappy side and the Goon side, like the FCs are a thing. Like, it was a good war, right? You know, like, I've got no issue admitting that we lost the war when it really came down to it at the end, right? But it was a good fucking war. Everyone had a lot of fun for the most part. I would hope that that was true, right? And then, you know, it was was a good time, you know? Every FC had a good time, got to run a lot of fleets, have a lot of fights, you know? Like, there was, it was generally like a good amount of content that was good for the game. I had a blast, you know? Except for the fact that obviously M2 was hard capped. Um, I mean, M2 was a, a rough time, I'm going to lie to you, right? But uh, it was a... Uh, is, is that only a situ- trigger to you cry when Vili says it? <laughs> it was a problem that we would never have had to face if we hadn't gone to war in the first place, right? And, um, you know, it was a unique situation that we had to come around and we had to, you know, find ways to do all of that that we never would have had to done we never would have had to have done that otherwise, right? So, you know, in a lot of ways, it was even my personal opinion, right? There was, like, some good stuff, a lot of good stuff that came out of the M2 situation because we learned a lot from it, right? We even managed to fix a couple of server bugs in the process. Like, oh, with yeah. um, Enho. Enho fixed the tie-dye bug in terms of bosons not applying, and then bosons started applying in tie-dye again. Obviously, yeah, there was a lot was a of crazy bad crazy stuff happened. There's a lot of bad stuff that happened, like with the game, right? But there's also a lot of like good stuff that we've uh, you know, like built to come out of it, you know. Yeah, I still think I still very much hold deep in my heart that Enho would have completely changed the war if it had worked. Keyword being if. I I wouldn't disagree with that at all. It was uh, would have wiped I, I've, many a super. I wasn't there for the actual fight that the Enho was there for, but um, you know, from the people I've chatted to that were there for it, it was like a fucking big ball play, right? And I've got a lot of respect for like the big making those big ball plays, right? And um, it didn't work out for, you know, whatever reason. You know, probably like server performance is like one of those reasons, right? And of course, you know, CCP coming out and saying that, you know, the boat is not working like effectively in tie dye, not like applying their damage correctly in tie dye is like, you know, a big part of that. Fair enough. I've watched the fucking videos Bunch of those bosses didn't fucking hit. They're like, you know, pointing sideways like shit, like whatever, you know. But to be fair, you know, like if it would have, if it, if it all would have come to a head and worked correctly, like it would have been, you know, a massive, like fucking huge deal, right? And I respect the, I respect the swing, you know, like sometimes you just got to fucking, you got to swing for it, right? I think they spent like a month of time just testing. And making sure, like, testing how to get it done, like, how to do the setup, how to get the warp ins. And it's like that was just the sheer amount of dedication to even pull it off. It was, uh... Given the amount of effort that went into it, it's actually kind of unfortunate that, um, you know, there was like some level of like server bugs that allowed the AoE Doomsday to, like, you know, not really apply like, their full damage. I mean, at, at the time, I was happy about it, but, you know, looking back with rose-tinted glasses, I have to agree, it would have been great to have seen it work. I mean, as I said, clearly, I'm happy it didn't because it would have fucked a lot of our shit up, but it would have been... I remember I was sitting there and I was sinoing in the nightmares, and then, you know, the first, you know, Chevron's rock up of a red titan, I'm like, what? And then another and another, I'm like, wait, are they jumping in? I'm like, no, 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 wait, they're warping in. I just hear command comms go nuts. And I was like, oh, shit, here we go. It was uh, it was pretty glorious. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think it'll ever be able to happen again because of the super, super because, like, bigger. The because super's are bigger now. now. Well, people have seen it, but um, supers are bigger as model sizes. So even pulling it off, you'd need more Titans. Well, they were bigger at the time. I don't think the model sizes have no, changed. No, it was, um, it was pre, pre-super beginning. 
But there was no supers, it was just titans, right? No, no, so they you how they increased the size of supers. Like oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So the actual models was like it was pre size growth. So you'd have I kind of still think that it more. could. I kind of still think that it could happen again, right? I still think it's like feasible, right? It might not be like the most like you know efficient play to make, but it, you know, if someone if someone did it again, it probably could happen. It could work better again, I think. And like I said, I wasn't there for like when it actually happens, but from the you know, people that I had chat to who were there for it, it was a pretty fucking scary situation oh, to be sure. in. Oh, my asshole was fucking, and I wasn't even one of those supers. <laughs> I, I was on the undock in my dread shooting carriers. And- How many supers would have died? Uh, well, they based on what I had seen, and I am like guesstimating, right? Like it's not like you know mathematical in any way. Uh, but I, from what the Videos I've seen, it looked like about twenty to thirty percent of the bosons had actually like missed, so they didn't like really hit what they were aiming for. And of the ones that did hit, um, they were you know pretty spread out. So if I had to guess, and like there's no way to not guess, right? You're not gonna know how that's gonna work out without like replicating it and doing it again. Uh, you know. At, if everything had applied correctly, uh, possibly most of the supers that had jumped in first, um, after they broke in Vuln, they're probably going to be somewhere between like 50 to 30 percent armor, I would guess. You know, like without having looked into it in a lot of detail, that's like my like off the cuff for my own memory kind of thing, right? It would have been lots. <laughs> I mean, they would have been pretty fucking low. They would have been, well, they wouldn't have died, right? But they would have been pretty fucking low. You don't think any of them would have actually... How many... What, what was two no. Titans, wasn't it? Uh, it? It was mostly Supers, from what I understand. It was like a few Titans, but mostly Supers. No, the uh, the uh, the Titans that Goons jumped in for the Boson was... I think it was... 10. No, it was way more than 10. Way more than 10. 15? Right, it was like 20... 20, it was like 20 we had a bunch like escape as well. Mm. A bunch got very lucky and managed to warp out. Yeah, but like the total amount that were involved in the Endo thing, it was like 20 plus men. It was like 20-ish, I believe. Anyway, 20 bosons is a fucking lot of fucking damage, right? Oh, for sure. And obviously, like, due to the way that, you know, they had warped in with, you know, the bookmarks and everything, like, all of the bosons, like, they weren't all overlapping and stuff, like, a bunch of them overlapping, but, like, not everything kind of thing. A couple of so, them like, shooting backwards. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of them, like, missing, and then, like, a bunch of them are hitting, and then, like, because of the fact it's like, you know, like you jump in in a sphere and then like they'd warped in in like a sphere and then like some of them will be overlapping on some parts and then like not overlapping on another part and like they'll be overlapping on, on a different part, right? Like the, the, the actual like overlapping max damage is like somewhat inconsistent from what I had seen. And maybe maybe some of those like supers or, or titans, I think mostly supers that have jumped in, some of them may have been like very, very fucking low armor, right? If everything had applied properly, the servers had worked correctly, like some of those supers would have been like real fucking low armor. Well, but for the most of part, the, most of them weren't. I know some of the map, map can, math that was done after it happened um, did show that they had enough firepower there to wipe out half, if not the entire fleet, if it worked. Like There's, all the supers uh, would have been fun because a lot of them weren't tank fit at the time. Yes, that is absolutely true. But there's also a lot of things that weren't necessarily taken into account there, such as like the invulnerability timer on the jump in, and then like you know like the links and all that stuff, right? Like there's certainly like a lot of napkin math that like wasn't necessarily taken too much into account. Like people were like really keen to be like, oh yeah, it looks like it could have all died. Everything could have died, right? Because their napkin math like worked out to you know that that eventuality. And I was like, oh my god, it could be amazing. Oh yeah, for sure. As I said, it was napkin math. There's no, I don't think there's any way to know unless someone really like went back through the footage or something and worked out which ones would have hit and how much and like, and that's obviously too much, way too much effort. For I, <laughs> I wouldn't even want to say that like you have to go back and look through the the footage, right? Like, I, I genuinely think that you you just won't know yeah. unless you did it again. Exactly. If you did the exact same thing again, the server is like working correctly and the you know, the bosun damage are playing correctly as it should have done during tie dye, which obviously it didn't. You know, CSP came out and said it didn't, and you know, fucking hold your hand up. You know, like you can't really argue against that, right? But you know, if that same situation happened again and the end whole thing happened again, right? But the bosun's actually hit, 
yeah, a bunch of them would have missed, a bunch of them would have hit, and like, there's no real way to like know exactly what would happen. You can have a good idea, but there's no way to know for sure until it happens again, and that's just the beauty of the game, right? Exactly. One day, someone's going to try again, and we'll find out. We'll see for sure. We'll see what happens next time. I think prices, one day have, got, I think prices have got to drop a lot more before they, we try anything that risque. <laughs> But but Titans are disposable now, so you can just like plus you you just do it, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know ten uh, was it ten build dreads from a snuff. <laughs> um. So anyway, so one of the other topics, actually speaking of snuff, is the fall of NSH. Uh, any of you guys currently up and hip with that story? Uh, I think there's a video. Uh, showing how he dissolved the alliance and transferred everything over, like in real time. So, from what I've been able to gather, and from what uh, the I think the guy jumped on uh, Trash Talk Tuesday was, so he still had directorship role, like he still had full control, and he was in snuff, and they were fighting in SH, and apparently they um, ECM the shit out of him, and he got really fucking annoyed with it. Is that story really true? Apparent, like this is this is coming from guys who were there, and this is coming from, because apparently he live streamed and everything, and he recorded the entire thing. So we know he did it, but obviously the cause is going to be up for debate. But apparently, according to the snuff guys that jumped on Trash Talk Tuesday this week, was he got annoyed with them ECMing him and just went fuck it, jumped in, uh, transferred everything over to you know the different corporations and everything, booted all the corps from the alliance. Um, this include, includes the Keep Star. He sold the Keep Star to Fridge Frat for peanuts. Um, Where have I heard that before? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, just completely and utterly dissolved NSH, uh, ripped the fittings out of all of their productions. People were losing like 40 billion worth of. Um, clones. Uh, yeah, well, clones. No, um, fuck, what, do you, what's, what is it when you turn Moongo into t- shit? Oh, like reactions? Reaction, yeah. Like losing like 40 build worth of reactions and stuff like that. All of their, their stuff and build. You just, yeah, yank the clone bays. Yeah, jeez for that. Um, yeah, so, yeah, and Nura came in and just absolutely fucking tanked it. And, yeah, he bobbed it is uh, what a lot of people are saying at the moment. Um, that was definitely something. Uh, it self-destructed all the TCUs, all the... Um, my hubs, yeah, flipped every structure, pulled everything out of them. It was. Uh, it if was, only uh, someone could have seen this coming. I mean, I think everybody after that happened went back and checked their director, um, you know, ACLs to make sure that someone. I mean, because this isn't the first. Like we had it's fucking too late at that happen. point, though, right? <clears throat> we had something similar happen with. Ah, um, oh, fuck! Who were the blokes who were living next to us in ESO? Uh, uh, was it so, uh, Requiem? Requiem Atal- yeah, Requiem, Requiem, Atal- Requiem, Requiem yeah. yeah. Remember, like, you know, you had a, a pissed off AFK director come on and start flipping shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Check and your then, ACLs, like, Goon- guys. Check your ACLs. I'm sure Cryo can you know, speak to this a little bit, but my understanding was, you know, Goons tried to claim credit for that based on, like, some black hand concept of, like, flipping the dude who was a director, but... Pretty much, it was just like a, a dude who was just really pissed off, and he just like wanted to throw a towel in and uh, fuck the dudes up. Uh, from what I understand, the and this is what I've been told, and I think is still the actual story is he was pissed, and there was someone around to help him take out his anger and tell him how to do it in the best possible way. Potentially <laughs> encourage him to uh, poke the right buttons, kind of thing, right? So the devil on the shoulder, so to speak, going, "Yes, yes, excellent. Let the heat flow through you." <laughs> My presumption on that topic is that, as usual, um, you know, like some people heard one story, some people heard another story, and both of them are quite wildly different. But you know, more than more likely than not, what is the actual truth is like somewhere in between. You know, like some middle ground there. I mean, we're never really going to know unless the guy jumps on the show. So if you want to jump on the show, feel free. Hit me up or uh, hit Luke up. <laughs> uh, same as Anur and anyone from NSH and Snuff that wants to talk about it. You know, it's an open show. If you yeah, Bob. Anything. Where you at, Bob? Bob's probably asleep, man. Where's, hey. where's Bob? Bob's oh, he's, uh, yeah, it's pretty late for a match. US, yeah. 
I'm actually shocked you're on at the moment, Carmen. What time is it over in uh, Limey Land? It's, uh, it's 11 a.m., man. It's, you know, it's early. That's not too bad. You're the real Bob. <laughs> Big Bob is asleep. Uh, in Twitch chat from Marshall Bob. Oh, man, I remember the first time I met my, uh, Marshall Bob, no, uh, Brother Bob, when the uh, the Pappy servers. Um, Billy had told me to jump on and help Jeremy with a, a fleet, and I came, <clears throat> came in and started asking questions. Bob's like, who the fuck is this Kale guy? Fuck off. Shut the fuck up, mate. Don't th- you try to fucking want to be Billy? Let Jeremy do it. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? What the hell? <laughs> Let Jeremy do it. Fucking hell. I bet he regrets those words. Let Jeremy do what he wants. <laughs> I love Jeremy, man. He's a great dude. Yeah, Jeremy's great. He, um, you know, he tries and he learns, and that's the best any of us can do. You know, he's keep trying. He's legit, like pretty decent as well. You know, like he's not terrible. Oh yeah, no, he's 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 a get. As I said, like Jeremy, I've I've watched Jeremy grow from when he was in Brave to when he was in Test, and yeah, dude's dude's doing good, man. I will, I will give you like my fucking two cents on the shit, right? Like. I, I promise you, like, my own personal opinion on this, which I think is very likely to be, like, you know, very close to the truth here. If Jeremy really sticks with, like, doing that thing, like, in a couple of years, he's going to be, like, he's going to be fucking good. Like, really, really fucking good. He's got a really good... He might not be, like, the most experienced dude now. He might not have the most, like, you know, knowledge about how to do stuff. But he's very keen to learn. And he's very open to, like, you know, being tutored and taught. And like he, and he he's like he's got the bunch. right mentality. He's got he's got the right mentality to like learn how to do stuff really well. And he's happy to go out there and like take a fucking fight and lose and then learn from losing, right? And that's how you get good. A couple of years time, man. Like that's gonna be fucking sick. I mean the amount of flack that he cops uh throughout like the last year or so and the fact that he, he he just cops on the chin and keeps going, water off a duck's back, you know, mad props to Jeremy for that. I think half the sh- if someone said half that shit to me, I would have turned around and fucking told him to go stick it up their ass. <laughs> it's a price to pay, right? For uh, you know, being a don't want to say like person of influence, right? But you know, if you're gonna be like a, a somewhat mid level to a high level FC in an alliance, like big alliance like Tess, right? You just, it's, yeah, that's just how it's gonna go, right? Oh, like you're gonna get like FaceTime, you're gonna get shit from people for no fucking reason. What about uh, away? Luke's disappeared. Okay, uh, my co-host is fucked off somewhere. Uh- <laughs> Well, you know, that's, uh, that's great, because um, I'm going to step up and be your co-host now. Oh, welcome, Carmen Joel, co-host of Serious Land of Saturday, the AU, premier AUTZ talk show, uh, and your worst place to get any news related, <laughs> because... Let's talk about Pure Blind. Cryo, do you know much about like, what's going on in like Cloud Ring and Pure Blind? You know, know much uh, about that? I have like- no real connection to what's going on in the military at the moment. All I know is yesterday was Thanksgiving, and sometimes you are the pilgrim, and sometimes you are the turkey. Uh, and it might sound it. like I'm like trying to like bait you into you know like talking something about this, right? But like legit, right? I don't know anything about this shit. Like I'm like very don't really know much about it. I'm just like interested to hear what other people. At large, no. Like outside about it. of the battle report, I've got no clue what went down. I just got someone message me going, "Wow, goons got fucked," and then link the battle um, with Volta. Well, we there's been not a bunch of like, there was going to be some nightmares, and turns out there's been nightmares. a bunch of fights. There's yeah. been a bunch of fights. There's been a bunch of battle reports, right? There, there was one that you know goons lost by a bunch recently, but there's also been a few that they won by a lot recently, right? Like the whole thing's been, uh, you know, it's a, a big topic. That I don't even know too much about right so if there's anyone in the chat who wants to come on the show and uh chat about that that whole thing in cloud ring or pure blind if they if they know some stuff you want to chat about get in the chat channel you can go to drag me we'll come and drag you in and we'll chat about it yeah so if you click the or if you scroll down if you're on twitch um and i'll also i'll link the channel in the uh in the chat for those of you guys who are watching on your phone maybe or on a smart tv or on an xbox because uh someone was saying that you, you can't see the about section i'll link the uh, the server into the uh, twitch chat if you guys want to hop on have a chat uh talk about it or talk about anything really that uh, any of the topics we've brought up or we're going to be bringing up jump onto the um the new eden post discord jump in the drag me and we'll drag you onto the show and you can have your say you know yeah. 
real talk though, right? Like if you're watching the show on like an Xbox, um, I, I don't really know what to say to you. This is possibly not the you're show. You're doing something you. fundamentally wrong. Oh no, man. Like, um, I know that sometimes I used to just uh, throw Twitch streams up for Eve on my Xbox when I was chilling on the couch when I was at my old place. Oh, it's, it's easy to do. You can just, you know, sit there and have dinner and watch an Eve stream. I mean, I used to watch, oh, what was that? What's that Russian guy that, uh, uh, he's, got heap, he's got heaps of people. He came into ESO a couple of times. Um, he's a really good it's solo. The solo guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he's a Russian. I've got no is idea it, what he's talking is about. Is the guy that's on CSLAM? Before. I'm not sure. I, beast? I think it is. He's like a, a, a young guy. A young Russian something, dude. something beast, I beast. Yes, I beast. Yeah, yeah. I used to just, uh, you know, I'd make dinner and I'd, um, you know, I'd sit down in the lounge room and I'd throw his stream on because as I, said, I can't understand a thing he's saying, but he's a, a, a maestro, you know, in Eve of solo PvP. <laughs> the, the, the buttons do all the fucking talking, you know, like uh, he exactly. just like he just slaps, you know. And, we, we, and it. it it's amazing to see as well, like um, the like enormous difference that is like what is you know solo PvP or very small gang PvP versus like what is like the you know really really big scale like fleet fights and stuff like that. But the big scale stuff, I would say, is a lot easier than like the small scale solo stuff. Well, actually, and a lot of people get really confused by that, but like it's just it, it is like way fucking easier to do like big fights. I think that um that can actually bring me to the next topic. So the reason we didn't really stream much uh, last weekend was Eve Down Under twenty twenty one happened. Um, I tried my hand at Alliance tournament play. For, well, not AT level play, but uh, at tournament play two v twos. Did you enjoy it? I had a fucking blast and realized I know absolutely nothing. Um, I ringed out the f in the first match uh, because I kept the guy at range and then he just pushed me out of the ring um, and my teammate burned out his gun um, and uh, the second match we just same did we, we got dumpstered my teammate didn't realize because I was in a uh, Stormbringer teammate didn't realize that Stormbringers damaged his ship so he was orbiting at 500 on the enemies while I was zapping away and <laughs> killed him <laughs> <laughs> Um, Cryo, did you end up in the tournament, or were you only queued up for the Friday, which didn't happen? I was going to be queued up on Friday just to fill in, just in case one of the two guys I was going to fill in for had to dip, which was going to be a possibility, but they didn't because I got uh Yeah, we, we had to move it to, uh, yes, uh, Thunderdome wasn't on. Um, yeah. Look, I've, I've only logged in like three times in the last two weeks, so, you know. Look, just man, one of those doesn't matter. Look, I, I love having you on the show. Your insight from you know uh, your coordinator point of view and everything is always great. So thanks for jumping on. He's, he's not a coordinator anymore, but yeah, he's a, certainly got like a very now I just um, log in to, has had that experience doing that, right? Now I log in just to bring the experience of Delve back and hot drop on things. Yeah. Do they are they still Delve doing that, like two v two filament show? Uh, proving grounds, I believe so. Cryo, me and you are going to do some fucking TV2 proving grounds. Oh, God. I'm <laughs> going to finally reveal how awful I am at this game. Are you fucking kidding? Like, you'll be better than me. Like, I'm awful at this game. But, um, oh, you oh, both only play monitors. I, yeah, it's, that's the thing. They were like uh, in the Twitch chat. So we were, we were streaming to like 800 people. And a lot of the people in the Twitch chat was like, Kale would have won if he was allowed in a monitor. <laughs> The thing is, like, I think there's like certainly like some amount of people out there who like don't really quite understand that like when you are like playing the game from like a coordinator or FC level on like a, a big like you know strategic level where you're organizing a lot of people, it is massively different to like playing like a two v two in the game. Like oh. it's not even it's not even remotely close to being the same thing. It's like just like leagues beyond even being close to being the same game. It's like comparing. Um hearts of iron to starcraft technically they're both strategy games but they could not be Crow, do you like... play hearts of iron no my flatmate does though so um like i so i got knocked out within uh the first round and then in the first round of the losers round i ended up commentating with uh wingnut um who is a uh alliance tournament commentator and just talking to him about it and like, cause we were, we were chatting in PMs and stuff as well. Like just about fits and the things you have to think about, you know, it's, it is completely different 
Uh, it is a completely different beast. I mean, it's a different at, world. Yeah, you look at Noblock and you want stock standard alpha tank so you know exactly what you've got. But when you when you start going into the small gang PvP, when you start going into the tournaments and everything, it yeah, it's completely different. Like I went in, uh, we decided to, uh, in between rounds, we decided to do two battleship 1v1s. And I got absolutely demolished in the first round because he knew exactly what to fit. He went, uh, I went for a target painter. I thought that was a great idea. I was fucking wrong. I got absolutely demolished uh, because he's like, oh no, in, in 1v1, the only ship that will ever win was a Myrmidon because of the, um, you know, the, the bonus to revs. Um, and then the second round that we went, I went for a triple wed Vindicator against his Nightmare because I did a bit of research after my uh, humiliating loss and was able to win the second round because I was like, oh yeah, and the webs, the web, I, if I lock him down, he can't move. I'm just blasting. But it's just, it is completely different thinking. And I had to like fully click away from like, you know, what you've essentially taught me, Carmen, on what, you know, when we've talked about uh, doctrine changes and everything. And yeah, it is, it, my, I, like props to you guys who do the small gang stuff and the tournament stuff. It, it's, it is a completely different beast. And it's amazing to have even just had a peek behind the curtain. It's an entirely different skill set, right? And like, I would say that it's one of the more interesting things about Eve overall is that the stuff that is like, you know, the meta or you know, thinking and like the high thinking and idealizing of like you know, like fits and stuff behind like one v ones is completely different to like what is like a ten v ten versus like a seventy v seventy versus like a two hundred v two hundred, right? And like based on the scale of what you're doing, the things that are useful and effective and work are like different. So like it's incredibly hard to like make that balance like for everything. And obviously there's always gonna be something that is like unbalanced on some level of like what the fuck you're doing, right? When you have to balance two hundred and fifty ships with, you know, like basically like hundred thousand variations of like what their slots layout could be or you know what modules are there and then like what they might fight against like it's like an insurmountable you know problem to balance against right well, like um, so there's positioning ammo types uh juggling your overheats we there was one round it was absolutely amazing uh it was the uh battleship round they jumped they micro jump drived at each other but one of them had obviously clicked it like a second after his uh, partner had done it. So the team jumped on top of him and within like a split, it had to be like a nanosecond was able to get his scram on and keep him in place. And they um, ended up winning the uh, tournament. I think it was Emus who did it. Um, and just like all that kind of stuff, you know, like in big fleets, you know, uh, your FC is like, all right, guys, put two, three cycles of overheat into this one. And then, you know, you get told when to overheat. Um, but in this, like, I burn out so many modules because I just forgot about them or forgot that it was in a middle rack and then I burnt out all my mids and I was like, fuck. You know, like, I suck. <laughs> in a lot of ways, right, that's, uh, you know, it speaks to the fact that, you know, big fleet fights kind of suck in a lot of ways, right? Um, yeah. You know, you might have, like, 230, 250 people in a fleet, but... For the most part, you know, like what is like the effective performance of those two hundred two fifty people, right? It's all based on like what is the one person who's a, the FC, right? Who's anchoring, who's like positioning the fleet, who's like broadcasting the targets, what targets are they broadcasting, at what effective rate are they broadcasting those targets, right? And it's kind of like crazy a little bit to think that there's like you know a fleet of like 200, 250 people and like 80, 90 percent of like what their effective effectiveness on the field is is based on like one person and what they're doing. Hey Roxas, is, thanks for the raid, mate. Mad. Welcome to the channel. We're just talking about the uh, the absolute amazing and staggering difference between tournament play, small gang play, and uh, no block uh, big fleets. There's certainly some interesting comparisons to be made there. Um, one of the things that would be quite interesting would be to, you know, like bridge that gap a lot between kind of like what the play style is for, you know, the very, very small gang, you know, like tournament kind of play style, right? And then the big null blocks. And there's some very basic things you could do there that would completely 
make everyone in the game who are in the no blocks hate you and it would be like mega cancer for them until they learn to like adapt basically to the, the new play style right um and very simple things right like anchoring if you remove anchoring from the game suddenly like the entire idea and concept of how fleet fights work in nullsec or you know even you know low sec or high sec right anchoring common i did not it was literally just warp in battleships at 200 and start sniping yeah yeah i mean i'm not trying to say that it would be better i'm just saying it'd be different right it was like you know the uh, the old wars, the you know the the colonial wars, wars of independence. You know both sides stood there, ready their muskets and fired. <laughs> he, he didn't yeah, get out you, of the trenches. If you if you look at how the game is played now, right? Um, you know in null sec at least, right? I'm going like from the angle like towards like how null sec fights happen, right? There's like massive fleets of people, right? You know, like 200, 250 people. And it's mostly like their entire output is based on like, you know, one or two people who are like, you know, directing like what those 250 people are, you know, outputting, what is their effective output that they're doing. And if you like drop the fleet size to like 80 people, you know, like suddenly that's a completely different fucking ball game, right? Drop the drop the max fleet size to eighty people. Remove anchoring. Remove like broadcasts from the fleet window. The entire game is completely different, right? It bring, I'm it not trying to say it brings it. you back to alpha males. Of, all right, everyone, pri- uh, get ready to lock. You know, A, B, C. Okay, lock and fire. Right now, we're shooting, I'm, <laughs> and you'd have to. Sit I'm not there trying to say that's a good idea, right? Like, oh. I'm, I'm not. I'm not proposing this as a thing that would be good, right? But it's um, it's very. What I'm trying to say is that there is a lot of things you could do that are like very, very simple, easy changes to make to the game that would drastically change, you know, like the whole fundamentally the entire way the game is works, you know, works in, in Nullsec, right? And people sort of like have these ideas and issues about like, oh yeah, I don't like this certain ship class or like certain things that are powered and stuff like this. Which is fine, you know, like They've got their own opinions, right? And like certainly like they're probably not wrong in some in some ways, right? But there's like so many things that you could do that would like completely change the game, possibly in a better way, possibly not in a better way. I'd really like to see I know I know a lot of people are for and against it. I'm I'd love to see the hack meta change. I it's it's stagnant, it's boring, it's the same shit. Everyone is doing it. I'd love to see yes. the hack meta fuck off. <laughs> That's like it's like vaguely the direction I was going in with this, uh, this conversation, but uh, Bring back you're totally right. Battleships are still good. They're good now. That is good situationally, right? And like battle cruisers are good now situationally. The big issue is that hacks are good in every situation. And hacks were never good in every situation until the patch came out in, I believe, like 2017, I think it was, that added the ADC to hacks. Might have been 2016. I think it was 2017. Hacks were like, you know, situationally good before that, but when the ADC came out, hacks suddenly, not not even that, right? It took a bit of time to like become adopted but for people to realize they're really good. But the ADC is basically the reason why hacks are so prevalent. It's not the only reason why it's so prevalent. Um, there's a huge amount of reasons why they are so popular as they are, but they wouldn't be so popular as they are if the ADC wasn't a thing, as historically we have seen when the ADC wasn't a thing. All right, guys, I let's throw up a quick poll. Uh, so check on top of Twitch chat, put your vote in, set to five minutes. Would you like to see the hack meta end? I would love to go back to the glory days of Yacht Fleet. Alpha males, mate. No, we had pre-nerf materials. Um, materials. The thing is, right, the issue with the hack meta is that the hack meta is not a problem. It is a symptom of a problem, right? And if you try and solve the hack meta, you're not really solving the real problem. You're just kind of like producing different other symptoms of the same problem. That's really the issue here. I mean, look, I so Roxas has said, um, EVE Online is all about the big fleet fights. If you nerf the big fleet tie-dye fights, you kill the main selling point of the game. I don't think getting rid of hacks would um, get rid of the big fleet tie dyes. I think it would just change up the ships we bring. Like, I personally would love to see battleship fleets become a main thing again instead of um, a defense doctrine. 
I mean, obviously that's a lot harder now with the, the indie changes and price changes, but it's, it's something I'd personally love to see again. Nothing hacks would cause less fights to happen, 100%. You think so? Or you don't yes. think like we'd, we'd go back to like Feroxes or, you know? No, absolutely we wouldn't. No, no chance. Okay. Well, we, we, might, we might do for a cost-effectiveness point of view, but um, in terms of like uh, causing fights to happen, like there would be less fights that would happen if we... If, if hacks were worse, there would be less fights that would happen. I'd, I'd like to hey, see wait. people use the recloner and supers more in fights, you know, to, as, as a way to keep the fights ongoing as well. I mean, I know right, that's, that's oh. difficult if you've got a super out floating in space and no pause or anything to tether on, but it would be something that would be uh, interesting to see. It's like an ancillary thing that allows you to reship quicker, right? But it doesn't fundamentally change, like, what is the, you know, the doctrine matchup and how it works, you know? And then that's we really, like, where the problems come from. It's like, like, what are the doctrine matchups and how they work? And, like, how does the fleet combat mechanics work from, you know, offense versus defense? That's really where all the issues come from. True. I mean, like, you, you got to give the hacks. They're good at alpha and they're good at tank with their ADC. So that's two things you definitely look at when you're trying to work out a, a mainline doctrine. Um, and yeah, hacks definitely hacks. have eagles too many awesome. things going for them. Everyone forgets hacks. about eagles. Eagles hacks. are great. Hacks. No, people don't forget about eagles. Eagles are fucking insane. They're overpowered as fuck. They're really, really good. Hacks are really good, right? Um, generally speaking, you know, obviously, you know, there's a, a bunch of hacks that are really, really bad, and there's a bunch of hacks that are like really good, and it very much depends on how you fit them and how you fly them and what you do with them. But for the most part, broadly speaking, hacks are too good at too many things, I would say, right now. You can probably nerf a lot of that shit, and they'll still be really popular for reasons that are absolutely nothing to do with how you know good they are at just being good at a lot of different stuff, right? The hack meta is, um, is amplified by the fact that hacks are really really good comparative to other subcaps but even if they were like okay compared to other subcaps they would still be the go-to for all of the reasons that are nothing to do with them being better than other subcaps yeah plus also the mass amount of caches probably a lot of people have off hacks if they change them there's going to be a lot of dead ships in hangers <laughs> it's basically fighters right like like fighters um dictate most of the matter for subcap fighters And um, that, 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 that's the issue you're going to run into if you um, make hacks not be a viable thing that you can use in these big fights, right? Then your other go-to options become either battleships or battle cruisers, right? Which are both pretty slow. Can we and at then... least, like, if we're going to keep the hack meta, can we at least nerf the Munin and Eagle so that we have and buff, like, some other hacks? So we, like, go back to, like, I don't know, Sacrilege and Zealot meta. Bring that well, I, I, don't, don't say that too loud, you're someone pro god. <laughs> so, the issue that I have with all this stuff, right, is that as I was sort of getting to the point I was talking about, right, if you just remove hacks like straight out, you have like you know, battleships and battle cruisers, right, and they both just like turbo eat shit to fighters, right? And that's kind of like most of the reason why hacks are like the go to thing is because if you want to like offensively fight, you kind of have to fight against fighters because that's just how the meta works, right? You, 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 your things that you fight over is either I hubs, you know, or structures, and I hubs are like, you know, probably you know you're, you're fighting against hacks or you know because they're the most mobile. You're not gonna, you're not going to take fucking battle cruisers or battleships and that shit because you can't like be mobile to fight over you know a constellation. So hacks are the thing you want to use for that, right? So by nature of that very fact, both sides use hacks to like do that shit, right? Unless you go up then, against Volta, in which case you get destroyed by nightmares. Right, but nightmares with support are ridiculous when you're on and but they also you can't really put nightmares out in space if you are not 100 percent sure you either have a structure to be on or you have cap supremacy because also they, they can fundamentally they can, weak to to hordreds because of the fact that they are battleships right they're slow to move around so if you want to do something like an eye hub timer you can you know move around them you can outmaneuver them because they're battleships right like if you're in hacks they're in battleships you can walk around them you can outmaneuver them right 
I mean, that's really like the kind of fundamental issue there is that, you know, the only two things that anyone ever fights over in NOSAC is basically iHubs and structures. And for iHubs, you need to be mobile. So you need to pretty much be, you know, BCs or cruisers, right? So you tax, hacks are just like the best option there pretty much. Pure, purely due to like, you know, mobility. And then when you come to like fighting over structures, like fuck me, fighting over structures, like I could talk about for an hour on that shit, right? <laughs> fighting over structures is horrible, absolutely fucking horrible, right? Like if you are fighting over a structure, either offensively or defensively, the best play for both sides is fucking putting carriers with fucking SS fires fucking in Teller. Either you're offensively fucking sticking on like a Siege Fort or Siege Astra, fucking putting your carriers out there, fucking slaps of fighters out, right? Or you're defensively putting your own fucking carriers out there, just because carriers on Tether are so fucking strong. And like, that's like the de facto go to best thing to do. And the only real way to like be able to like have a good way to fight against that is, you know, to be able to fucking outrange the fighters or like burn away from them and carry them or some shit like that right like there's, there's no good way to actually kill fighters in this game which is probably one of the main issues with like huge scale block combat i would say at the moment well fighters have got a cap to how much damage they can receive in a single volley so that way you can't just yeah them off. well well they don't have a cap to how much they can receive in a single volley like um they have a cap to um how many fighters you can kill in um, a single server tick, right? So you, you can't kill more than one fighter from that group of fighters in, in, one, in one server tick, right? But it kind of comes down to the same kind of issue where it's like fighters are just really good and, you know, carriers in Tether are just really good. So, you know, like half of the meta of fighting in Nullsec is like, you know, half of it is like fighting of iHubs where you need to have mobility, which is Hacks really good at you know being just good at everything and having mobility, and then you go and look at like fighting the structures, and like then you need to have mobility fighting the structures because you need to fucking run away from fighters. Like both sides of it, like they point in the same direction, where it's like the you know very small amount of things, are, you know, very valuable things that make your shit really good. It's just the same stuff. Yeah, I think uh, I think Roxas and Chats agreeing with you. He says uh, the main issue with hacks is they are pretty much a jack of all trade combat ship, and that's the main issue. They are certainly too good at everything. I totally agree with that. But what I would say is that if you nerf them a bunch, you probably won't see them like be phased out of the meta because the fact that they're just like generally strong in a bunch of areas is not the main reason that they are used in Nullsack. It makes them very good to use, but it's not the main reason why they are used. Like, the single most, uh, you know, the single reason that they are used in Nullsec for the most part is because they can fucking, they can disengage from carriers. They can fight fighters and disengage. That is like the number one reason that hacks are used in Nullsec is the main reason they that are they are the go to. Boys. <laughs> It's the main reason the hacks are the, the meta in, in Nullsec, right? It's because you can, you, you can run away from fighters, you can run away from carriers. In my opinion, struggle just to line out, shoot sabers, and leave. Yeah, it's it's very difficult to chat, like specifically in regards to not like, right? It's very difficult to chat about like subcap, um, you know, fleet balance without talking about how caps interact with subcaps, and then also how sub uh, structures interact with those two things as well. Like those three things are like incredibly closely interlinked, like in like ways that you wouldn't even imagine, right? Like those three things are like tied at the hip, all three of them, into how fights happen in Nullsec. And honestly, like the the current hack meta is possibly like one of the most balanced, versatile, and like reasonable subcap metas that has been around in a game as long as I own playing as an FC for a long time, at least. You know, there's a whole bunch of different fleet comms that are actually reasonable to use. They all have different pros and cons. They're also all pretty decent. They all perform relatively okay, at least against, uh, you know, what is the prevailing, you know, like, fucking dominating bullshit, which is pretty much like carriers on tether. 
you know, there's a, there's a bunch of different stuff that you can do, right? Like, there's, a, there's like freaking you know, f- what, five or six possibly different like fleet comps you could use that hacks, and like it's it's a lot of like rock paper scissors. Like it's actually genuinely like not not horrible, right? Like, there's not like one dominant thing that just wins, right? Yeah, look, the thing is, like, if you've been playing long enough, like I have, and I believe Cryo has too, it's the, the meta changes all the time. So it, this may stay around for a year, or it's already stayed around for a while. You know, it's probably got like a year or two left before CCP does something that everyone gets angry at them about. And then we'll be flying something different because something else will get a buff and someone or someone else will work out like a golden fit that works really great. And that'll be the, uh, the new Nullsec meta. Yeah, it's always the way, right? I mean, you know, EVE players are experts in min-maxing anything that is around in the game. Like, they'll find uh, the best thing to use, right? Look, going back to the tournament stuff, having to fuck around in Pytha, like, you Pytha warriors are absolutely blow my mind with some of the stuff that you guys are able to pull up. I am, I'm okay with the EVE fitting tool. I jump in Pytha and I'm like a two-year-old trying to work out how to put the uh, fry angle in the fry angle hole. <laughs> it's just different goals, man. You know, like, um, you know, you're looking at different things, you know. Um, I'm certain that if I chat to someone uh, from, you know, one of these, like, high-ranking, you know, AT teams, you know, go and chat to one of them, like, they'll have an entirely different perspective on what they're looking for from a ship and what's good and what's bad versus what I'm doing because it's a different... We're playing a different game, basically. Yeah, I, I, I linked the fit to Atticus for the cruise around. I was like, what do you think of this? And he's like, no, nah, you're a fucking idiot. That that doesn't work because of this, 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 and this. And once he mentioned it, I was like, Oh yeah, but at the time I thought it was a great fit. <laughs> it's just one of those things. So like, um, I wouldn't even want to say it's like related to, um, you know, how well you know, like the AT or something like that, right? Like people who go and spend a lot of time um, in something like you know the e fitting tool in the game or Pyfor or something like that. You know, like you learn a lot about how the game fundamentally works just by like dicking around with stuff and like you know like poking values or something. How does this work? How does that work? Or if I put a target pair on this thing, how does that work? You know, yeah. like you learn a huge amount about a game just by doing that stuff, right? But it's also very directed, right? Like if if your whole stuff you're doing is directed about how how the massive fleet fights works, right? Like how how does like EHP versus like volley damage work on like a certain scale, you know, like the research you do, and it is research, you get out of it um, the result that you are looking for from what you are putting in, you know, like if you're looking for a certain result, you're looking for a certain scale, a, a certain like scenario, you'll learn about that scenario. And then if you do a totally different thing and you like try to learn about a different scenario, you'll learn about that different scenario. And they're not always like cross compatible at all. Yeah, there's a fuck the man. This game is amazing in its uh, depth and breadth, uh, width, fuck words. You know what I mean? Like just how massive it is and how many things you can do in it. The things you can learn, the things that like this is still today. You know, the, um, I remember when I first joined Omega and uh, Suez was like, "Hey, you know, if you press L, it brings up a screen with all your bookmarks in the system." what is this witchcraft <laughs> yeah I mean just all going back quickly to the topic of like not just like necessarily the AT right but like there's a bunch of like you know tournaments and stuff that's like you know, similar to the AT right like community stuff like probably most of the people who play in those tournaments right like not even like not even necessarily like high ranking players right but like people who are like you know placing like you know like 10 to 15 kind of thing in their teams right probably most of them i would say probably most of them are better individual pilots than i am right like i don't think i'm a very good pilot personally in the game right these people that, that you know play these like 10 v you know, 5 5 v 5 10 v 10 matches they're like genuinely like really fucking good pilots they have an enormous amount of game knowledge like they like know a huge amount about how the game works like they just have, have a lot of shit position. they're really fucking good right I mean, and like the game what you said before like a big part of the at is positioning positioning yourself and making sure that you don't get too far from out of the ring you know and as you said before like we're we're all growing up on an age of all right guys anchored by approach and one person does all the positioning yes it's uh 
the point I'm trying to get at is that I think it is a totally different game, right? Oh, yeah, like if it, if I went to go and play, like if I went to go and play in one of these like ten v ten games, right? Like I would be shit. Like hand on my heart, right? I'm not a good fucking pilot. I'm not a good youth player, right? I would be fucking shit and all that stuff, right? But by the same token, right? You know, like again, like you know, flip that fucking coin on his head. Uh, you're gonna take like a five hundred v five hundred fight, right? Like I, I know a lot about how, how to take a five hundred v five hundred fight, right? It's like it's completely different. Even though like the ships are the same and like the modules you can use are the same, blah blah. blah like the scale of it, like the, the the game works in a completely different way based on the different scale that you're working at. Oh, and I think I think a lot of people don't like quite understand that potentially. I think probably a lot of people do, but um, I've seen a lot of people that have like um, they kind of like put like. Nautic FC is on like some kind of like big pedestal. Like, the, oh, oh you, you guys like run huge fleets, right? You must like be really, really good at everything in a game. It's totally <laughs> not true. No, they it are so totally wrong. Totally not true. <laughs> so, so wrong. <laughs> Probably most of them are fucking better at the game than I am. But like, I'm playing a different game tonight, right? Yeah. And so are you. I, I look at the, the small game guys who, you know, in uh, gate campers and stuff like that, who were able in one ship to hold off, like one battleship, like one Vindy. They were able to hold off like five other battleships, kill four of them and still escape. And I'll just sit there and I'm like, how the fuck did they do that? I fucking wish I was as good at the game as those people are, right? Well, look, you're doing the 2v2s with the cryo and the proving ground, so, you know, you might get that. Oh, yeah, game. right. <laughs> we, we'd have to stream that. You're not crying. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, you can hear the regret for coming on the show in his voice. <laughs> I'm going to throw a salad, right? I don't know anything at all about any of the proving ground stuff. I've never done a proving ground thing in my life. Man, I'm just, I was just trying to paint my minis, and then you bullied me into coming on. Did I? Or was that Luke? It's Carmen. Oh, was it Carmen? Oh, okay. It, it was me, yeah. yeah. Luke's like this. So yeah. Well, no, I, I think Luke's trying to blow us up, and I think Thomas left to go blow Luke up. So <laughs> that's where Luke Twire and Thomas Wilk have uh, disappeared to. Well, why, why don't we make this a thing for uh, you know the next, uh, you know, what's the name of that show here? Salacious slander Saturday. There's a, there's a, there's an unofficial name that we told we we were told we couldn't use, so we had to go with serious slander Saturday. Serious slander Saturday. Yeah, we, where we, we, we wanted we, to be. We couldn't call it Trash Cunts Tuesday or anything like that. So. Yeah, we wanted to be um S <laughs> H bleep. Yeah, because it wasn't Tuesday. Well, Saturday. No, yeah, sorry. Uh, slo- uh, was, we were looking at sloshed. Uh, see you next Tuesday, Saturday, and like other very. Oh yeah, that's uh. Yeah, so that's not okay. Uh, CC, uh, it's not CCP. Uh, Twitch wouldn't even let me put. Um, when I tried to put the poll up for the hacks, I kept trying different iterations of. Uh, should the hack meta get fucked? No, nope, can't put that in. Should the hack hack meta get? You know, it is like so many things. Like even non curse words, it is like this does not conform to standard. I'm like, ah. <laughs> you know, I'm actually I'm trying to put together like a proposal of some changes that I would like to see to hacks I think would like to put them into generally a better place and uh, you know that's a uh, something I'm working on I'm gonna shop it around you know chat to a bunch of different people see see how it goes right and uh, you know probably end up on Reddit at some point if I ever end up doing it you'll become Reddit famous Carmen for more than just bashing structures Oh, I, I'm already Reddit famous. Like, you know, like in it, so it's fucking found my Reddit account. It's like love fucking bash on your shit. <laughs> so, Cryo, mm. um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this out there as an idea. Um, next week on the show on Saturday, we should start the show with me and you running live on the stream a couple of TV2 games. If I'm awake, there's a, it's 12.45 for me in the morning right now. And I'm... Uh... Tired well, I'm not. Can. I'm not going to hold you to it, like 100. Yeah. But if you're about, if I'm around, yeah. Like I'm 30 in like right? two months, so I'm old. Yeah, my you, uh, 31st. I'm, I'm older than you. Fast. I'm I'm nearly 34. Oh god. All right, boomer. Hurts <laughs> me old. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. But yeah, I'll be if I'm around. Yeah. Sounds good. I, I'll pay you, and um, if you're about, we'll uh, we'll, we'll smack some TV twos, and um. We can stream it, me and you, slapping some chunks. We're getting our chunks slapped. 
<laughs> That's we, we, what we should do, right? We should make sure that we, um, because it works on like a queue system, right? It's like you like filament yeah. at the same time. Uh, we should like make sure that me and you filament at the same time. That um, Kale and Luke Tor filament at the same time. Oh, oh man, yeah. <laughs> I still have um, I still have a head to head. So I'll just jump clone back up there. Oh, let, me, let me pull up the launcher. Let, let's see what proving grounds are up at the moment. Uh, proving ground four, player prophecy free for all. Who, who is top of the leaderboard for proving grounds? Is it still cable? Uh, is it, uh, yes, is it cable? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the ca- cable shooter. Yeah, cable RMT retire, whatever his name is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I th- believe that the 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 top people, because um, I know we were we were looking at a bunch of their fits um, when we were looking at doing the two v twos. So I know that Cable is one, and I'm just trying to pull up uh, Gorski. Gorski Car is another. I think they're the top at the moment. Gorski Car is a, a famous name I've heard. Uh, so the I'm going to give you the inside track, Cry, on um, you know what is like the thing that's going to be the best thing to do in the the TV2 meta. I've tried to tell this to my alliance a bunch of times, but they they don't believe me. This is a, a good thing you should use. I, so I, I need you. I need you to believe. I, I need you to buy in and like believe me. This is going to be good, right? I'm sorry to. I, I swear to God, if you bring in sense of dampening units, um, tracking the drop to minutes. <laughs> Trust Look, me, I have seen you with armor um, um, munins with afterburners, right? Oh, no, no, is that, no, is that no, a pro god fit? No, 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 sh- shield munins, right? For like tracking disruptor munins, like the legit sick. So I'm sorry to burst your bubble about the two v twos, but the current proving ground are four player prophecy free for all. So we all just make sure we queue for in a prophecy four. right at well, the same time. Yeah. Well, there's there's four of us then, isn't it? It's like you know us three and Luke. Sorry, Luke. It looks like you're. Uh, uh, are you still Luke's boss, Cryo? Or uh... he's not. Uh, my, my only space job at the moment is director of propaganda. Oh yeah, how is Reddit Swarm going? I haven't had to pay any Plex out for months. It's great. <laughs> I. It's I, too loud. Antar will pop up somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm checking my cupboard at the moment. Make sure he's not watching. This. This evening, I had to go like some like social like drinking thing in my work, right? And I somehow accidentally ended up in a position where I had to explain like uh, my Eve job to like some people at my work. It was very <laughs> poor bastard. Very very fucking awkward. I um uh, an acquaintance of my partner recently had a massive spat about how he believes that the the dying numbers in CCP is due to big games like Final Fantasy fourteen and Genshin Impact pulling players away. Uh, okay, that's about as makes as much sense as the Reddit post I saw today, where some Reddit moderator said that any anti-moderator comments is hate speech. So, <laughs> wow, you know, some people are just built different, and that yeah. person is different. My favorite thing was like my partner was because she's obviously he's uh, you know these chats, and when I'm on the other chat shows, and when I'm arguing with people on comms about everything, and she went and went, no, 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 no. Like, the problem is the developers are out of touch with the player base, and I was like, out of girl. And uh, he's like, oh, you have no idea what you're talking about. She turned around, he's like, yeah, but my fiancé was, like, fought in the war that you kept talking about that you wanted to be, and he was actually there. I think he's got a better understanding than you do. He's like, oh, 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 well, well, you, um, um, and then apparently left the chat, and I was like, yeah, nah. The falling numbers are definitely not due to Final Fantasy XIV and Genshin Impact. You know what's really interesting about that, right? What what do you think is really interesting about that? What do I think is interesting? I think that's interesting. There was a massive spike of users coming back thanks to COVID, and it's been not capped on very well. It it was like partially COVID, but also like a a lot of like the war, right? Like there were like two things that coincided very well to have an enormous spike of of users, right? I came back in like. May of that year, maybe a bit earlier. I was very I surprised in what was like the um, big spike in like monthly active users, effectively to protest in Jita. It was a big <laughs> fucking spike. If you like, looked at that, didn't, didn't it small. jump up to thirty five thousand people on the, uh, the 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 first protest? Mm-hmm. I believe so. Yeah. I mean, people had to go uh, protest some... in um, per, uh, perimeter because they couldn't get in the Jita. <laughs> 
certainly there's some people who had some uh, thoughts and opinions about that whole topic that uh, are possibly best discussed in private, should we say? Uh, yeah, well, I think that pretty much got thrown all across Reddit anyway. Well, it, I know it didn't, but, you know. What, the ping? Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Um, Going back to, like, what you were sort of saying before, though, like, uh, one of the more interesting things uh, for me personally is that, um, you know, there's not really a lot of people in, you know, the community who really have a good understanding of, like, actually how video games are made broadly. I mean, yeah, they have a vague idea, right? And they have, like, some, like, ideas about how they think that the ideas are that, you know, how they work inside a games company. But, you know, for the vast majority of people, right, you know, we've got a community of, like, you know, like, thousands and thousands of people, right? And, you know, they all hit up Reddit. They've all got their own thoughts, their own opinions, their own voice. But for the most part, none of them have any, like, real idea about how games are really made, right? Well, and they, like, it. take their presumptions about how it works and they, like, throw it at, like, you know, these patch notes that come out from CSP and these, like, you know, dev blogs and, you know, like, ideas, which is effectively what the, you know, big mining thing was, right? It was like, hey, this is, like, kind of, like, what we think we would like to do, right? What, what do you think? And, like, yeah, vitriol, absolute vitriol that was thrown at it. Fairly, in my opinion. A lot of it was fair, right? But, like, these people don't fucking know how to make games. Almost all of them, you know? I mean, you might not actually know this, coming. I've actually got a d- diploma in interactive and digital game design. But I've, unlike you, you I've really? got apps. Yeah, I do. Um, I, I got it when uh, mid twenty. I didn't know that. That's very cool. Uh, $27,000 student debt I'll probably never pay back. Um, but, you know, I've got no experience in the industry, which is why um, I usually bow down to you when you come up with, like, I, I've got the basic to. idea. Well, no. I mean, I know essentially how they're built, but when it comes to actually building them, I've got nothing outside of building a uh, a 2v2 medieval fighting arena thing in UDK because UE4 wasn't out at the time. <laughs> I had this exact same literal argument with people um at my work in my office like 10 hours ago right like good design is just good design you know like you don't have to you know qualify it with you know whatever fuck like game is involved in or whatever technology you're using right good design is just good design you know and like it, the that is why games can be absolutely timeless because they are designed very well. Stuff like chess, for example, right? Chess has fucking fantastic cool design, people. right? And it's, it's not the like chess is not a fucking simple game, right? Chess is a very, very fucking complicated game, right? And there's not obviously like the direct analogies to to even in so many ways, right? But it's a very complicated game whereby it's got really good design and it's got a lot of longevity, right? And Eve, in a lot of ways, has a lot of parallels, whereas an incredibly complicated game, which probably should have good design, but, you know, possibly doesn't maybe have quite so good design in a bunch of places. And, like, you know, you can, like, begin to, like, build this idea of, like, how it could be better. So, um, and it's nothing to do with, like, what the fucking technology of the game is at all, right? You could play Eve on a fucking spreadsheet, you know? Pretty lot called do. So, um, but good design is good design. Orion uh, Supernova's got something in the chat. I know he's very hot on this topic because I've been watching him talk in the Eve Down Under Discord a fair bit about this, but he says that uh, CCP's biggest problem over the last 10 years is they have been listening to the player base too much and not just laying down a plan for the game that the Eve players could then discover. So, um, as I said... I think that it is... I think that it is incredibly difficult to point a finger at what the problems are from outside of CCP's company without, you know, being on the inside to kind of, like, know what is really going on, you know? It's entirely possible that is true, and it's also entirely possible that's completely not true at all based on the fact that they, as a company, might have entirely different goals that have got nothing to do with like what you think would be good for the game. Yeah. The only real way to um, effect real change is to become involved in their internal process and try and influence it in a way that is better for the game, which is effectively what the CSM is, but it's not really, but it should be. 
I, I think CSM next year is going to be really interesting. We've got a lot of uh, people hitting their, what, three-year tenure, so they're not able to um, uh, run again next year. So it's definitely going to be a bit of a shake-up from the, the names we've seen uh, in the CSM for the last three years. And that's really interesting because that's, honest to God, exactly where I was going with this, uh, this line of conversation. I was uh, pushing you down pretty much. Oh, it's almost like I didn't realize what you were trying to do. <laughs> I, I I am going to be running for CSM next year, and um, you know perhaps there's you know a lot of people who like don't really know who the fuck I am, don't really believe that you know I'm a person that's got some good ideas about a game, but I have got a unique perspective. I've got uh, a, a single thing that nobody else who is going to be running the CSM will have. No one on the CSM that I've seen in the past in the last ten years has had, and possibly no one in the CSM that's running will have any future. I, like, I work in. Free- I work in video games, dude. Like Don't my career, me. my career, right, is I work in video games. So I know how the fuck that shit works, right? Like that's my my USP, you know. Hopefully, Don't I've got make some me bully Carneros but... into running for CSM. <laughs> dude, that would be the worst thing to do. Like he used to work for CCP. Like, I, I like Carneros. He's a nice dude. But that's that's my thing, right? Like, um, you know, I, I'm going to run CSM just because I think like I've got some good ideas about how to poke CCP to you know like do stuff that's good. But also, like my my thing, my USP is like they're not going to bullshit me, right? Because like I know how games companies work because I work in games, so like they're not going to be able to bullshit me quite so much as perhaps they might other people. So you you know the, when they try to talk about certain limitations, you'd be like, well, no, because of this. Or if they try to throw smoke, you'll be like, well, actually, you know, this program does do this, and this coding works this way. So is that perhaps perhaps a little bit, but it's um it's it's more to do with like um just general concepts of like how how game development works, right? And you know, possibly CCP is quite different to how a lot of other games companies works, but you know, broadly speaking. On a very fundamental level, they all, you know, kind of really work in the same way, and um, you know, a lot of what they do is based on, um, like, strategy and um, you know, like, time management. Uh, you know, if you look at what they've done in like the quadrants and stuff, um, you know, you can kind of like, get an idea of uh, you know what their capacity is for doing stuff and what their you know goals and ideas are, and um, you know, you can begin to you know look upon current a little bit and sort of see. You could have been doing this, but you didn't, kind of thing, right? Well, it'll be interesting to see how that goes, Carmen. Um, you probably got my vote, just, you know, you are my corpy and uh, my mill director, so it's probably going to be, uh, I think, the way that Cryer would put it, um, the way the state tells you how to vote. As long as I get more than 20 votes, I'll be very happy. You know, it's really got like, um, you're more than welcome to vote in the Imperium um, the way we tell you to. It's your freedom. <laughs> I mean, I um, I will admit, I I did throw a vote in for Brisk for uh last year. Um, see, Brisk was seems like a pretty why? Good bloke. Well, why? Because personally, uh, God, here we go. We're gonna get sub political. Um, like I had been talking with Brisk a fair bit about a bunch of different issues. Um, he'd brought it up to people. Um, I know that some of the things, some of the issues like the uh, the red dot and stuff, pe- uh, brisk heard, you know, and went and talked to CCP about it. Do we seem like someone who actually listened to the issues players had and put it forward? Now, whether or not CCP did anything about it is obviously up to CCP, but at least, you know, he had his ear to the ground and he, he listened to the, the, the common man, so to speak, and um, put their problems forward. I like Brisk. I think Brisk is a, a good dude, you know. Just generally. And he has an amazing uh, model ship collection. I am absolutely in awe of it. I love it. He's got like all these old maritime model ships. They're amazing. I have some misgivings perhaps, or, you know, some, perhaps I'm wrong on us, but I've got some, some thoughts on, uh, you know, Brisk being in the CSM that uh, because of like what he does in the game, perhaps he's, uh, you know, not got so many of his, you know, well-founded own opinions. Perhaps it's a lot of like stuff that people have uh, you know, discussed with him you know, in some ways. Um, but it's not said it's wrong in any way. So um, we've got a question in the chat. A uh, question for the panel. How can CCP balance the economy in such a way that prevents future proliferation without putting capital goals on a much uh, smaller scale than the larger alliance? 
out of the reach of um, small independent operators. Personally, the second part of that question, I don't really understand. So, like, do you understand that second part of the question? I, I think what he's trying to say is how can they make it so it's harder for the larger alliance to proliferate, but not in a way that is going to negatively impact those who aren't as big as, say, Goon Swarm, a Horde, Fraternity, stuff like that? Realistically, there is no way to not proliferate. Is what I would say to that. There's no way without fundamentally changing the game, um, without making it so shit degrades or shit disappears or things like that, which would be fucking very funny. If, if, if you want, if you want to fundamentally fix the issue of um, like the strength of Titan fleets and you know, like the, the you know, proliferation of Titans and the strength of blocks that have a lot of Titans, right? There's basically only there's only two ways you can really do it. The first one is that you make a secondary ship class that is like the super titan, right? And then you effectively are resetting the proliferation race that will, you know, in 10 years probably like reach the same stalemate that you have now. And the second way that you can fix that is by making Titans a lot cheaper than they are now and also a lot weaker than they are now. So they become a, you know, tactical tool that you can use frequently, but they're not the I win burn, right? They need to become, um, like, in the concept of, like, having rock, paper, scissors, if there's, like, rock, paper, scissors, but, like, two or three other also options and the five or six of them interact in a very similar way that's probably what you want for capital warfare to be i would say for the most part but that's really the only two ways to do it it's like either you like just fuck titans uh to the point where they're like just like really a lot cheaper and a lot more prevalent and a lot weaker and um you just like accept that they are some, that then going to become like part of that very frequent capital matter and the second option is you just have to like have the super class of Titans and then you're just doing exactly the same thing again and you're going to have the same issue in like five years of Titan proliferation or like super Titan proliferation. Um, so Redline 2001, and I don't think it's, I, judging from the time, I don't think it's Redliners in New Eden Post, uh, you know, boss, Redline. I says the game sure. isn't coded to enable capital fights in the magnitude that we experienced in the past year. And I, I'm inclined to agree. Like, we, we've seen what happens as soon as that super fleet and that capital fleet drop their fighters and everyone just starts tanking. I mean, it's not even necessarily capitals, right? Like, the game is not, like, built to support sub-capital fights on that scale either, right? It's not a capital issue. It's a scale issue. I don't know. I've, uh, you know, when you've got a 1,000 subcaps on the field, I've had less issues than we've had a 1,000 people in the system like on the field and a shit ton of fighters as soon as those fighters come out my game just goes to shit modules don't cycle properly things don't reload like oh thing goes to buggery <laughs> I, I don't think anyone would uh, disagree that you know um having in those enormous tie-dye fights like loads of like you know effectively anything that creates like more server load, be it uh, carriers or any kind of subcap doctrine that uses like drones, for example. Like anything like adds more server load is possibly gonna deteriorate the experience of you know playing the game, you know, like in, in that like fight. No it's, really, it's, like, it's more entities on the field. It's that, more right? entities that the server's gotta keep track of. And I think that's the problem. You've got 10 carriers that drop five fighters each, you've then just added a shit ton more entities that the uh, the game's got to uh, keep track of, or the server node's got to keep track of. Thanks for the follow, mate. Sure, but I, I don't think that's... That's certainly a problem, I would say, but it's not it's not necessarily, like, the biggest problem that exists. Like, it, carriers... You know, regular carriers have, like, three fighter tubes, right? If every carry was changed to have one fighter tube that was three times as strong, so you know it's effectively the same. It's just one fighter. Mm. I don't think it would change the meta or the realistic, like fucking, you know, like practical situation on the day at all. Like it wouldn't change. Like the the reason these things happen is nothing to do with like you know carriers like creating lag because realistically, like they don't 
that much. I mean, yeah, a little bit they do, sure, but it's not it's not even anywhere close to being like the main reason that these things are, you know, the way they are at all. Um, I don't know, man. I've I've heard from a lot of uh, people in FC positions, command positions, uh, coordinating and stuff that a, a lot of people do view the fighters as being very close to game breaking in large numbers. I would say that fighters are possibly one of the biggest issues with the game, just overall. Um, the the biggest problem that you know exists with fighters is that there's no effective way to defang them properly. Like you, there's stuff that's like kind of okay, but there's nothing that's like good that works like really really well. Like there, there's just nothing that's good. I mean, we um, got hella defanged when we were using them in 3D, but, but ha- we also have ha- we have many different ways to reship. How many freighters did you have with fucking fighters stocked full, just like no, fucking no. Sanex or carriers, right? Just like fucking no, no, we did more than that. We had freighters filled with fighters, and exactly fighter. right, and a Titan. So the Titan would have its fleet hangar open, and the freighters would drop fighters into the Titan. And then the Titan <laughs> a huge model, so the supers were reshipping off of the t- massive Titan model. Just to make sure there's not a Nestor in there, or was, uh, um, Alterari will uh, rock up and steal it. <laughs> I mean, as, as far as I'm concerned, that is one of the biggest issues with, like, you know, big Nolsec fights at the moment, is that almost every single big Nolsec fight effectively comes down to either one side has carriers sat in tether on a fort, or the other side has carriers set, sat in tether on a fort or you know, an astro or something, right? And that's just the de facto um, dominant strategy, right? Because it's just too good to not do. And here we go full circle to why terror mechanics are shit. Welcome back, Thomas. But that's kind of like what I was getting at in my, my previous like comment I was making, right? So you can't have a meaningful conversation about like um subcap balance in the Nolsec arena without also discussing, you know, how capitals work and how citadels work, because the three of them are like very, very tightly intertwined. Yeah, they're the they're the triforce of Nolsec at the moment. Your capital your structures and your hack fleets. If uh, if tether mechanics were massively nerfed, then you would see you know a bunch of changes in the entire ecosystem of how those fights work. If fighters were massively nerfed overnight, you would also see a, a massive shift in how the entire ecosystem of how those fights work. Right? I'd like possibly to see tether as possibly the changes to. Possibly their changes to subcaps would be the least meaningful, I would say, because they don't like really change anything about the major drivers of what like drives that meta to exist. I think even if you said, hey, you can't launch fighters while in range of tether, that wouldn't change anything. You'd just have people doing it like they used to do, sitting just outside of a pass. I'd yeah, like I mean, to. there's a bunch of stuff you could do that just like wouldn't change anything, right? Yeah. I mean, w- one of the things I would like to see would be um, you can't re-tether if you have a 15-minute combat time, like a PvP combat time in 15 minutes, you can't re-tether if you have that, which would be a, a good change, I think. But I also don't think that it would meaningfully change that much in like the big block-scale warfare. I don't think it would change much at all. I had an idea about this. I'd like to see tether as a module with like a, a DD length cooldown. So you press the module and any anything within range tethers and will stay tethered. But if you detether, you've got to wait for the mod to cycle again or t- to be pressed. Uh, sounds but very awkward. Tether, I know, that was on just an idea I had, you know. Tether on its own is not, like, all of the problem. Like, I, I personally think that it's a big part of the problem, right? And, you know... If you look at like all of the situations that these big fights happen in, right, yes, yeah, certainly it's part of the problem. It's, it's not all of the problem, right? And you know, a big part of the problem that is aside from tether, I would say, is that you know most of these like fights happen over you know four azars. You know, that's generally like the you know, main objective that is you know four over you know the big things that people like want to actually fight over, right? And four azars are exceptionally good at killing capitals, and there's literally no way to stop them from being able to shoot and kill capitals. So if you have a Forza, and you're defending a Forza, and you drop, for example, a Fax, there's no way to make a small, measured capital escalation on it, because of the fact that if I drop one Fax on my own fort, you could drop like eight dreads, all your dreads will die. You just bubble them, they'll die. So 
you know, if you want to take a capital escalation on a hostile four, you effectively have to go all in or not in at all, which massively decourages, you know, it discourages fights from happening because you, you can't, like, go that, like, small step and, like, you know, build your way up the escalation chain. And it allows you to just get, get free fucking shit by just dropping a fucking fax in Fort Teller. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's going to be an opinion on everything and various ways to change it from everybody who plays it, you know. So, um... You're know. totally correct, right? But, you know, realistically, anyone who is informed at all, you know, has got an informed opinion about how fleet combat mechanics work at a large scale in Nullsack, almost all of them, as is well fucking seen from the... Uh, Reddit thread that I believe was was a high one to put out. You know, Citadels are broken. Like they're just really, really strong, right? And you know, the the fight that we saw in Cloud Ring uh, just a uh, few days ago, right? It was like seven hundred versus three hundred, something like that, right? Like the Imperium, you know, like fighting offensively into Forza, like seven hundred people versus like two hundred, three hundred people, and they're barely breaking even in the score, winning the objective. Seven hundred people versus three hundred people. Is like, it, it, if that is not, like, a sink, simple anecdote as to how strong the defensive game mechanics in this game are, I do not know what it is. Do we... I, I think we concentrate too much on the Isk War versus objective. Like, I know you play Dota as well, Carmen, and one of the things that piss me off about that is when people, like, don't do objectives because they're too busy chasing a kill, and we end up losing because the enemy team is doing the sure. objectives. Like, is that some is that a problem at the moment in Nullsec? Do you think that too many people are concentrate right. on the ISK and not on actually winning the objective? There's only so many times that you can feed to win the objective, right? Because at some point, if you do that every single time, it like begins to like tear a hole in your like larger war strategy, where effectively like you've got a you've got a bankroller somehow, right? Like, wars cost money, and, like, oh, yeah. people don't like talking about it, but, like, wars cost money, and at some point, it does matter. I mean, there's got to be a you, balance, for sure. If, if you're fighting offensively, and the only way that you can offensively win fights is to feed, like, no, you're not going to win. Like, overall, in the long term, you're just never going to win because you're going to run out of money. Everyone will. Everyone will. It's just, like, basic economics. Yeah, and that's pretty yeah, much the situation that. that we're in now, right? Like, like fighting offensive wars is so disadvantageous to the attacker um, that it's just a, a huge liability, basically. Especially and that's why mechanics, we've... Yeah. Well, it's, it's not especially with current mechanics, right? It is, like, directly because of current mechanics, right? And that's exactly the reason why, or probably a, a large part of the reason why, we've seen so much stagnation in the you know, political situation in Nullsec, right? We've seen like huge blocks forming because of the fact that you, you, you can't attack into someone without having like fucking two or three times their number because you, you just can't. Like The mechanics don't allow you to win in a meaningful way without turbo feeding unless you've got an enormous numbers advantage. And even when you do have an enormous number of advantage, it's still not easy. It's fucking hard. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you there, man. There's a lot of things that need to be changed, and hopefully uh, yourself and other people who are smarter than I who apply for the CSM or you know, are in positions that can make these changes are able to see ways around. At the moment, I I don't know. I, I, I don't get me wrong. I love Eve, but I just don't like logging on. I don't love logging on anymore. <laughs> I think, uh, Cryo, are you in the same boat at the moment as well? Oh, when I log in, I have a great time. I'm just, it takes a lot to convince me to log in these days. I love logging in. I love playing the game. I just think that there is like so many things that could be done to make the game like better than what it is now, right? Like, I can understand why people perhaps don't want to log in, right? Like, there's, not so many things that are, especially if you're like a PvP pilot in you know, Nullsec especially, there's just not like that many good reasons to log in and, and play the game, right? There's nothing to fight over. It's one of the things that I would shout at Hilmar about in Eve London like three or four years ago, right? There's nothing meaningful to fight over. I mean, what's the impetus and, to go on the offensive is one question in Twitch chat. 
Aside from some vague, oh, these guys are getting strong, we need to kill them. Well, that's kind of like the problem, right? There isn't really any like meaningful reasons to go and like, fight over stuff. Like, there's just content there's, reasons. As as absolutely ridiculous as it sounds, right? And everyone possibly in the Twitch chat is going to hate me for even raising this issue, right? Something like the TTT, which is you know obviously an exceptionally contentious issue. Something like that, where it's like a, a singular, incredibly high value income source, right? That kind of thing, if there wasn't a cartel, which you know, probably there's no way to not have a cartel, right? But before the cartel was established, there was a lot of pretty good fights that happened over that. Everyone was pretty invested. All, all of the big players were very invested in like, you know, getting involved in that fight over it, you know? And perhaps like Obviously, like, that's not a great example of it because it was, like, the one thing and, you know, we've reached a position now where um, it's not worth fighting over anymore at all. But if we had, like, 10 or 15 of those things, which were not quite the same you know, scale of value, but, you know, less value somewhere else in the game that we could fight over, people would fight over it. I would hope that people would fight over that shit. Yeah. Like one one of one of my main things I would like to see returns to the game, even though I'm actually not like completely convinced that it'd be a great idea, but I'd be interested to see if it works out or not, would be um a return to having the option to do like passive moon mining. Oh, hundred percent. Like actually being able to go and hey, I want to passively take this shit off of you would actually open up a lot of Yeah, and like, you know, before Citadels came out, um, you know, most of where the big fights happened, you know, when you're not like actually invading someone at war, right? The border conflicts effectively, they happened over R64 money moons, posters and stuff, right? Yeah, and the reason when when we had this change to like the um active uh moon mining versus passive moon mining, right? It certainly incentivized people to have a lot of income and a lot of like actively expended on stuff that was like very much like within the area of influence of the alliance they're in, you know, but the border regions where stuff was a bit more, you know, dangerous, a bit more sketchy, where traditionally a lot of the big fights would have happened over the passive income R64s didn't happen anymore because even if you had the R64s, you can't really mine them because like they're on the border of your area of influence. So you, you can't really like safely mine them anymore, right? So what you tended to see was a lot of stagnation towards like you know blocks that were around in the same areas. Like they mine their own shit, like you know close to where they live, but the borders are just kind of like you know whatever. No one really did anything. No one really fights over it, right? But if if we had at least the opportunity to anchor an ethanol, shall we say, and put a, a service module in it that could passively extract. 25 30 percent of the you know, value from the moon passively that might well be worth fighting over that might cause fights to happen that might be a conflict driver similar to what the border conflicts of r64s used to be when posses were a thing yeah no that um i think either i've read you say that somewhere or someone else has brought up uh, a similar topic and um it actually sounds like a good idea like obviously, I, you, you you want the higher risk and reward if you mine it yourself, but uh, yeah, the lower percentage for passive. I think that'd be pretty good. Certainly, you couldn't ever like uh, make that work with like you know one hundred percent income from passive moon mining. Like oh, that'd no. be outrageous, right? Like it just wouldn't work at all, right? It'll just go back um, to like the platinum moon days. The vague idea of like doing some kind of like passive moon mining, where it's like you know a reduced income versus what the active is. I am. I know for a fact I am far from the first person to have had that idea, right? I've, like, talked to a lot of people who've had similar ideas. I think it's a fucking great idea, right? And the thing is, if you make it an option as well, you're not taking anything away from, you know, the people who want to, you know, go out there and do their active moon mining, their bios and stuff, right? If you make it, like, just a different service module on the Athenal that you can use, then it's happy days, right? It's a, it's, it's a merchant gameplay. People can choose what they want to do with it. Yeah, no, it's um, it, it'll definitely add a whole entire new mechanic and hopefully bring a a, a reason to fight. But I, I also see it as you know, like hope 
uh, you know, the possibility of causing infightings for smaller groups, though. Like, it'll work well for it larger does, groups, but... It does, it does have an inherent downside, I would say, though. The inherent downside is Citadels are not fun to fight over at all. They never have been. They're better now than they were before, but they're just, like, they're not fun. Like, not, no one is enjoying fighting on Citadel. No one's enjoying fighting on Citadels. I don't think anyone with a functioning brain enjoys Fuzzy Sov either, to be honest. You know what? I, I, I actually quite like Fuzzy Sov. Like, I, I think it's actually pretty decent. I mean, I it's, it's like, better than it. going into a system and having to burn a pause off every single fucking moon. <laughs> I genuinely the think thing is, no, 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 the thing is, if Fuzzy Sov, when it works, then it's fun, right? Like, a very good example, especially during the, during the war, was like one smip where you had a bunch of fleets fl uh, trying to fight over different nodes, right? That's where Fuzzy stuff is fun. In any other situation, it is just cancer. Yeah. Just Immediately why do it? M2, I was dropping my Horde Dread on, like, tons of happy fleets. Yes, we can. I, I think that the mechanics that Fuzzy Sov is based on is really, really good. And from my own personal experience, you know, during the war, I thought that, um, you know, the iHub fights that we had in the constellations around M2, you know, sort of directly after the M2 fights, right? That was some of the most fun that I had during the entire war, right? There was some really, really good fights. I don't think the, the mechanics of Fire Solve are entirely balanced, and I certainly don't think that they are the best that they could be. Um, as with many other things in a game, I think that there is um, too much of a defender's advantage, I would say. Like, I think the ADM bonuses are like way too much. You know, the eight, an hour to like fucking entosis a node is kind of like, what the oh, fuck? Yeah. You know, it's kind of like taking a piss of it. ADM5 system, like. Yeah, <laughs> I think the general mechanics of it, like the idea that you like you know, go around to, like entosis nodes and different like systems and stuff, is like it, it's a good idea and it works and it has created really good fights and it has created situations where we've had like the, during the war, right? Like you guys had like you know four or five fleas and we had four or five fleas and like everyone's like fighting in different places on different grids. Like it's genuinely like created some like pretty interesting fights, even though it's kind of horrible because you know. There was just a lot of a lot of stuff going on, and so it's like couldn't really quite handle like all the stuff at the same time. But I think you know some of the some of those fights that we had were some of the best fights that I've you know personally like enjoyed the most in like the entire war. If we could just somehow reduce like the absolutely outrageous defender's advantage, then um, I, I would be very happy with it as a mechanic personally. I think we one of the things we learned in the war was the different things counting down at different speeds compared to tie dye was uh, both sometimes was an advantage and sometimes was a major disadvantage for both sides. I think yeah. the tie dye at ten percent and then yet everything's counting down at the same speed and you know your guns are taking thirty seconds to fire and during that time that's thirty seconds for it to repair or uh, trying to spool up on an eye hub in a heavy height uh, tie dye system. I mean, that, that's something that's, like, easily easily fixed. Well, maybe not easily fixable, right? But it's, like, certainly something that CCP could look at if they identified it as being, like, a really big issue, right? I mean, I don't know, like, what you guys were looking at um, as a strategy during those, like, you know, big iHub fights and stuff. But, you know, one of the things that we were trying to do is, like, get all of our toasters out, toasters being, you know, in toaster ships, uh, you know, try and get all our Antosa stuff out there and like t basically tie dye lock a uh, lot of the systems in the constellation and then make sure that we're fighting in the systems that are tie dye locked so that no one can run nodes in those systems. And then in every system that we are not fighting in, where the tie dye is like you know, lower tie dye, we're running nodes effectively on nodes with like you know, smaller fleets and stuff like that. I think the thing that's a fundamental issue with the way timers and it's and it, it's such a fundamental issue i don't think you can divorce it from the game is um it is always in the offender in the offensive side's favor to punt a timer if they feel like they're just not going to take it because it costs you absolutely nothing but it yes. has to turn up every time that, that, that is very true I, I wouldn't disagree with that at all yeah no that's that's definitely true like those Athenor drops, I had to be up at two in the morning to deal with some of them. You mean Asgold? 
<laughs> Do you mean as bells? <laughs> yeah, as bells. Fuck. Yeah, me. I mean, in, in a lot of ways, though, right? Like that is like um, that. Like you said, right? There's no way to really get around that, and it, it's pretty much like always gonna be the case because it's just like a such a deeply rooted fundamental part of just like design of games that that's pretty much always how it's gonna work but you know that that in itself right is um like justification and reasoning for the defender's advantage in a bunch of ways right and i don't think anyone would say that you shouldn't have any defender's advantage because of exactly the reasons that you've stated, but I think that many, many people would say that the defender's advantage in the game currently as exists is way too strong. Way too strong. I, like, it's... If it's if it gets nerfed, then there needs to be an actual buy-in on the perspective of, the, like, the offensive side, because it's... There is no loss... I'm fine with that. ...for missing... Yeah, and that's, and that's a question where I ask it without knowing what a good answer looks like. Yeah, because there is no buy-in to passing on a um on Entosis timers. Basically, like the, when citadels and flex, specifically flex structures came out, um, they directly replaced a bunch of stuff that was uh you know post modules in the game, but they were drastically stronger than what was there before, and all of them were like you know effectively um. Things which were force multipliers for the, the defending side, right? Like like center jammers and jump bridges, right? Like those are like my two big things I really fucking hate in this game. Like center jammers are way too strong, and jump bridges themselves are way too strong. Like if you have looked at, um, you know, for, for anyone who's like watching the stream, right? If you've gone gone and looked at like where are the the main conflict zones that uh, you know Test, for example, you know my alliance and the goons have been fighting over in recent times. It's in Curse, for the most part. It's in Curse or Catch, right? Like the border between Curse and Catch. And, you know, Goons are in Delve. It's pretty much as far in the southwest as you can possibly get. And Test is in Outer Passage, which is pretty much as far in the northeast as you can possibly get, you know, give or take. And for both of those sides to come and, like, meet in the middle and go and fight, it's like 10-ish jumps each, you know, to get there. It's absolutely fucking outrageous. It's ridiculous. Both sides are like crossing like a quarter of the map in like ten jumps because of just regional gates and jump bridges. Yeah, it's, it's nice. fucking insane. Jump bridges without uh, jump aids is very interesting. Yes, and by interesting, I mean probably not great. In some ways, it is good because it allows you to have fights that you perhaps wouldn't have otherwise, right? So it's generating content in the game, but it's also stagnating um, the strategic like level of the political sphere in a lot of ways because you just have so much projection. Like everyone has so much projection, and having more projection basically allows you to just like every when everyone can be everywhere all the time. It encourages you to fall into this you know, two block mentality, which is where we are now. Yeah, look, there's definitely a lot of good things, there's definitely a lot of bad things, a lot of things that need changing. So um, I guess we'll see how that goes with uh, people's proposals. I mean, everyone's got an idea, not every idea is good. So I guess that's what well, my good. comes in. <laughs> I mean, they're good to you. Um, you know, I, I've got an idea of uh, eating a massive. You, you know, beef. you know the ADC. <laughs> yeah, here we go. You know, you know when you hit the ADC, it gives you like a bonus to resistances. Yep. I think that we should reduce the bonus that it gives to your resistances by like a lot, maybe like thirty-five to fifty percent. Burn out. Yeah, I um, e I, I saw someone even, even just with an ADC even just idea. reducing like the burst HP that you get, right? I, I saw someone had an idea, and I kind of like the idea of it, which is uh, the module starts strong when it, uh, or vice versa, you know, it starts weak and then towards the end it gets stronger, or it starts strong and yeah. then at the end it weakens. I also it. saw someone had an idea of like like making a spool up for it as well, rather right? you click it, but it doesn't go active straight away. Yeah. I mean, that would just put more of an emphasis on having um, comm spice. Exactly. <laughs> I think the spool up, yeah, that'd definitely be the thing. They're all interesting see. ideas, I think. I know I usually hit my ADC once I start getting, um, like, when I see the FC lock me up, 
start hovering my finger over it. When his fleet starts locking me up, that's when I get ready to press it. <laughs> do you just do you not like just drag lock like the whole fleet? Because hmm? that's that's why I do. Oh no, I normally do too, but it's like because that way you can call your targets and see what their health are. But um, if, yeah. I, if I'm just in a munin, like you know, I don't. Uh, you know, like I've jumped in fleets with you. And I'm like, hey, do you need a secondary? You're like, nah, I'm sweet. I was like, cool. So I'll just jump in a Munin or a Simi or something or Lynx. And I, I don't even know that. So I flew a hack. I'll um, I'll, I'll I'll see a I'll see the FC lock me up, and I'm like, all right, they they're getting ready. And one of two things will either happen. I'll get target painted by the FC before the fleet locks me, and I'm like, yeah, I'm the next primary. Or I start seeing a lot of yellow boxes pop up within the fleet. I'm like, all right, cool. I've just been called primary. And then I hit my ADC broadcast and, you know, dying a fire because I haven't realized all our lodgy's been taken out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of like the saddening part of like the, the hack meta, right? Is that the ADC is so strong that no one shoots the DPS ships first because they're, they're so tanky because of the ADC, right? So, you know, what everyone does is you shoot the Logi first and then the Lynx and that shit, right? Which you probably would mostly do first anyway, normally, right? But, like, the ADC makes it, like, so ridiculous for you to ever even consider shooting the, the DPS ships that that's just, that's just it, right? Every hack on hack fight is, like, you just shoot the Logi, both sides, all the time. Yeah, we've had we've I think we've had this uh, discussion um, when you when I first started FCing, and I know that you've talked about it a few times when other people are FCing, and they've asked you what targets do you hit, and it all comes down to you know the critical mass. If you have got enough to volley them, you can ignore the logi. If you can't, you've got to start hitting the logi and start taking them. You've you've got to have like a lot of critical mass there, right? I mean, obviously it depends on like you know what ships you are flying, but like. If you've got a full fleet with like you know over 150 hacks, it is very very difficult to justify not not shooting hacks basically. But when it comes to shooting logi, right, like you can clear logi like so fucking fast because they just don't have ADCs. They just don't have ADCs. You can clear all the fucking logi. If they're not going to use faxes, you can just clear all the logi, clear all the links, like no issue. Yeah. If the if the hacks were not quite so outrageously tanky as they are, then that would suddenly become a much more difficult balance to make. If like, oh, do I shoot Logi? Do I shoot the hacks? Kind of thing, right? Like it would be more of a, an actual decision to make rather than just like by de facto, there is no, like if you, sh if you don't shoot Logi, you're an idiot. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of take in as an FC, as you know, um, and as, uh, I've seen Cryo FC a few times. I had Cryo's FC call. I've seen Cryo FC, and then I lost it to uh, Snuff. <laughs> but um, guys, we've uh, we've been streaming for about two and a half hours. We might want to start thinking about winding down. It's getting a bit late for the uh, AU guys, Carmen. It's uh, nearly midnight for me. I know Cryo's two three hours ahead. So I'm soapboxing. You gave me a soapbox. You've been soapboxing for two hours and 35 minutes, mate. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I want to go to bed. It's one thirty. you um, still down for 2v2 next weekend, Cry? Uh, if I'm around, I'll be keen for 2v2, so I will make sure I'm in Jita or something. Yeah, I'll, uh, right, I'll uh, use my perimeter jump clone. <laughs> I think I'm, like, right next door to M-Tech. All right, so um, we'll do a couple of final thoughts. Uh, if you've got any, Cryo? Uh, nah. No, it's just too tired. Late. Yeah, Carmen, tired. Actually, yeah, the late. fuck if I ask Carmen for his final thoughts, we'll be here for another two and a half hours. <laughs> well, you know, my, my final thoughts, right, is um, you know, vote for me as CSM seventeen. And furthermore, Carthage must be destroyed. I'll make the game better because I know how to make the game better. <laughs> uh, look, my final thoughts is uh, well, there's uh, I've been plugging um, Eve down under for. Uh, so bloody long and it's finally finished um i need to come up with something original um look guys just fucking oh i've got a final final thought oh, here we oh go. my god um, fan fest um for anyone that hasn't been tracking like the tracking if you've not been tracking oh my god if you've not been tracking like the 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 you know the news updates from like you know like eve online right fan fest is a thing that is happening this year in iceland which i believe is in like is it like may i think this year so April or May, I think, FanFest. So, yeah, 
if you if you are a person that would like to go to FanFest, um, FanFest is back on. It's not been about for about two or three years. FanFest, I have been told by other people, it's fucking great. If you want to go to FanFest, you should fucking go to FanFest. I'm personally super psyched by this, right? Because I've never been to FanFest, and I'm going to FanFest this year, and I'm super excited about it. So if you're going to go to FanFest, um, like, make it good for me, because it's going to be my first one. I'm going to attempt to go. I spoke to a CCP convict and CCP larrikin about it. They're telling me that I should try to plan it for a week and rock up in the UK for a bit of a, a rest from the 26-hour flight. <laughs> Kale, if you want to... I mean, I'm in the UK, right? Like, If you want to like stop over and like crash my place, you're more than welcome, man. No worries. That sounds sweet. Um, my final thought is, look, just follow the golden rules. Don't be a dick. Be awesome to each other. Fly safe. Uh, I'm Kale. Uh, you've been watching Serious Land Saturday with uh, Carmen Gel, Thomas Wilk, Luke Tuar, and Cryo Huron. Uh, fly safe, guys. Um, I'm going to attempt to try to raid Nova Valentis. Um, whether or not that's going to work, no, it doesn't. I still don't have the permissions to, so the stream's just going to end. So, um, look, thank you very Vote much. Vote for Carmen, CSM17, and, uh, you know, the same time next week, uh, me and Cryo will do some TV2 on stream. Yeah, you know, maybe I'll go for CSM. Maybe you can start voting for me. <laughs> all right, guys, look, fly safe, be awesome. You're all, uh, you know, appreciate everyone watching the stream and uh, have a good night.